Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto gained the power of Super Saiyan and become a perfect ninja? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. No, he didn't die in a big battle as many would assume a warrior of his caliber would. Instead, he died peacefully in his sleep at the age of 95 next to his wife Hinata Hayuga Namikaze. After he'd finally finished the fourth shinobi war with his old team's help by defeating Kagaya, mother of the sage of the six paths and the originator of chakra, as well as her avatar, Black Zetsu, peace had reigned over the elemental nations. By popular demand, Naruto became the sixth Hokage after Tsunade retired and was able to rule justly for more than 40 years before turning over the title to his protege, Konohamaru. In that time, the villages had all set aside their petty squabbles and were able to live side by side in harmony. In order to help preserve the peace, Naruto was able to give physical forms back to the Biju who now watched over the nations as protectors, not demons or prisoners. His old tenant, Kurama the Nine-Tailed Fox decided to stick by Naruto's side throughout his life while his siblings watched over their respective lands. If one was to ask the Great Fox why he did this, he'd reply that it was, to make sure the brat didn't goof off and make a mess of the world, though everyone could tell Kurama said this fondly. Two years after the war ended, Naruto and Hinata had finally fully sorted out their feelings for each other and were married soon after. They had several children together and nearly countless grandchildren, all of whom became famous in their own right. He'd also placed his old teammates as his advisors, similar to how the third Hokage before him had done but they saw each other as equals and ruled fairly throughout the years. His retirement years were relaxing but nonetheless fun and he made sure to have as many adventures with his family as possible. So when his time finally came, he was able to meet the Reaper with no regrets. With Naruto one of the first things Naruto saw was white, fluffy clouds surrounding him. Shikamaru would love this place, he murmured out loud before he noticed something was different about him, instead of looking like he did before he went to sleep, an old but still in great shape man, he was a boy again, roughly 16 years old. The age where he saved the world. Am I dreaming? Naruto questioned out loud. No, your new journey has started, Uzumaki, came a deep, powerful voice behind him. Naruto turned around and saw the spectral image of the reaper floating in front of him. So it's you, huh? Guess that means my time's come, huh? Funny, you'd think with all the crazy stuff I did as a kid I'd be meeting you much sooner than now, Naruto said serenely, not worried at all that he was literally staring death in the face. The angel of death smiled, which was actually quite intimidating to the living given his demonic-like form. He then spoke to the sixth Hokage again, indeed it is, Naruto. I must say, You've really impressed my superior with all of your acts throughout the years. A boy who was brought up with nothing, ending up the savior of the world. Now that's what I call ironic. The Reaper laughed, which would send chills down any mortal's spine, yet for Naruto the sound was like wind chimes. The Avatar of Death then gained a more serious look about him and continued, So Uzumaki, before you part into the afterlife for good, I want to propose an offer my superior has for you. Naruto tilted his head slightly as he gained his, curious fox, face. An offer? The blonde asked, intrigued. Death nodded, yes. You see, every so often a great hero from life gets the opportunity to start life anew, in order to possibly help save another world or even another universe. You, Naruto, have met the requirements so you get the option to choose, do you wish to continue on to the afterlife, or do you wish for the chance to help save another world in need? Naruto was surprised but he mostly kept his calm, while the idea of one more great adventure was intriguing, there was something that held him back. What about my friends and family? I wouldn't be able to see them again, would I? he asked. Don't worry about that, son, a man's voice came from the clouds. Turning with a huge smile on his face, Naruto saw his parents, Minato and Kashina, coming out of the clouded area to where the whiskered teen and the reaper stood. Both parents looked at their son with pride and Kashina reached over and hugged her boy while Minato settled for ruffling his hair. Look at you, Naruto. So grown up and so strong, I knew you'd be capable of great things. 
Kashina said fondly as she released the hug and stood back to take a better look at her son. Minato smiled and nodded next to his wife. Thanks mom, dad, Naruto said fondly. Then he turned to Minato and asked, so what did you mean by not worrying about it? Minato gave his son a grin and said, well, after you live out your new life, you'll just make your way back here, and you don't need to worry about us missing you too much because you want to know a secret? With that he leaned closer to Naruto so he could say in a playful tone, the best thing about eternity is, it's eternal. Naruto gave his parents a wide grin and asked, so you think I should go for it? Hell yes. Kashina cried while giving her fist a pump, this is a once in an afterlife opportunity, why ain't know what I mean? Minato chuckled at his wife's antics, the choice is entirely up to you, son. Just know that you have our full support no matter what you chose. Naruto stood in silence for a few minutes before turning to the floating image of the reaper and said, all right, I'll do it. I mean, I wouldn't be much of a savior if I ignored the cry for help, even in other lives, now would I? The reaper smirked and declared, the choice has been made. Prepare for your transmigration, Uzumaki. Be prepared though, your new life will be vastly different from your old one. You will be put into a being that'd be capable of becoming the world's salvation, or its destroyer. Also, the energy you use will be different from the one you knew, so it's up to you to recreate any of your old techniques. I should also warn you, the being you inhabit may not be exactly human, Naruto nodded as that seemed to line up with what he'd heard about reincarnation. Death finished, now before you start your new life, is there anything that you wish to say to your parents? It'll be a few human years before you see them again. Naruto nodded as he turned towards his parents' forms. Mom, Dad, I just want to say, thanks for believing in me. I love you guys, at this he had to blink away some of the tears that threatened to spill from his eyes, and he noticed his parents weren't doing much better. Don't worry. I'll see you again before you know it, also, can you tell everybody else that I'll be seeing them soon? Also, tell my wife we'll be together sooner than she believe. Minato nodded while Kashina was more vocal, you best believe it, Naruto. She cried, tears openly pouring down her face at this. Then they both said in unison, we love you, Naruto. Turning back to the reaper, a smiling and crying Naruto said, I'm ready. Then brace yourself kid. Death Incarnate said as he pulled a purplish arm back, enjoy your new life. With that, the reaper thrust his palm forward and struck Naruto in the chest, then all went white. The underground lab of Dr. Jero. Naruto awoke with a start, and he noticed that his body felt strange. W where am I? He mentally stuttered as he tried to take in his surroundings with weak eyes. What happened? At that, his memories from both his past life and his meetings in the afterlife came rushing back to him. Oh yeah, I've been reborn. Does this mean I'm a baby now? That sucks, Naruto grumbled mentally. He blinked his weary eyes as his surroundings started to come into focus. What the, Naruto wondered as he noticed he was in some sort of lab that momentarily reminded him uncomfortably of Orochimaru's lab that his team went to in grass country. He also noticed that his body was being suspended in some sort of liquid inside a giant test tube. Okay, this is freaky. Naruto decided as he tried to move around in the liquid, though found his new body too weak to do more than wiggle around some. You are Cell, an android created by Dr. Jero. Asterisk a mechanical voice crackled through his mind. Huh? Naruto thought in shock, looking around in his limited capacities to try and locate the source of the voice. He found a speaker attached to the top of his tank, which seemed to lead to a giant metal computer of some sort that had blinking lights flashing across its screen. You are to become the perfect being. Find androids 17 and 18 to unlock your full potential and become the most powerful being in the galaxy. Asterisk the voice crackled once more in its monotone, mechanical drawl. Okay, this is weird. Am I supposed to be this cell guy? What is this thing talking about? Naruto thought in frustration. If he had his old body, he'd be ruffling his hair in frustration right about now. Well, better get comfortable. I have this feeling this'll be a long wait, Naruto thought glumly as he floated in the fluid. Days had passed and he started to learn things from the computer that was basically feeding him information. Apparently, his new body was made from the combined cells of various fighters from the planet, and was designed to make the ultimate warrior to rule the galaxy. He was also told things about these warriors. There was Son Goku, Naruto couldn't help but see the irony of that situation for the Son Goku he knew back in his old world. 
who was apparently the strongest fighter in the galaxy. He'd apparently defeated the evil army that Cell's creator had been a part of, and had only grown in power over the years. It was later discovered through Dr. Jero's spy drones that Goku wasn't even human at all, but a member of an alien warrior race called the Saiyans. Naruto watched all of Goku's adventures that the drones had recorded, apparently in order for Cell to learn all he could about the beings whose DNA made up his being and learn to fight like them. Instead, Naruto was able to learn much about the new world he found himself in. He learned about capsules, which reminded him of sealing scrolls, the animals that lived across the land, the magical dragon balls that could grant any wish once a year, and the people who lived there. Naruto laughed at some of the adventures Sun got himself into. Honestly, he reminded Naruto a lot like himself when he was young, though Goku was even more naive, if that was possible. He watched the friends Goku made and how he raised a family for four years till his evil brother, Raditz, came to Earth. Naruto felt a surge of pride for Goku when he rejected his people's evil ways and fought against his brother. He then saw Goku's son, Son Gohan, get trained by the former, demon, Piccolo, in order to prepare for the arrival of the other two Saiyans who were arriving in a year's time. Naruto then watched as Goku's friends fought, and died, against the Saiyan threat until Goku himself, back from the dead, was able to come in and save the day through skill, determination, and no small amount of luck. Naruto mentally frowned as he watched Vegeta, the Saiyan prince Goku spared as his attitude reminded him too much like that of Madara Uchiha, too wise and prideful with power to back it up, and not afraid to dispose of those who no longer fulfill his purpose. He then watched as Goku and his friends went to Piccolo's home planet of Namek to revive those lost in the Saiyan's attack. The friends returned months later but they didn't come back alone. Some sort of galactic tyrant named Frieza, who apparently Goku battled and won against on Namek, arrived shortly after with his father, King Cold, in order to get revenge against Goku. Fortunately, the Earth-raised Saiyan arrived and quickly put a stop to the family of tyrants. When Naruto was later informed that his body contained the cells of all these fighters, both good and bad, he was appalled at first but then figured that he could use their power to help save more people than the originals hurt. It was with great sadness that Naruto learned son Goku died only a few years later from a heart virus he picked up in space. The former ninja then seethed in anger as he learned that his supposed, creator, Dr. Jero, created beings called androids to help take over the world. The earlier androids were purely machines, meant to carry out the mad doctor's will. Later, he learned that Jero, in all his depraved madness, kidnapped punk teens and turned them into androids. Then there were androids like him, apparently, who were completely organic yet artificially created. Originally, the androids' purpose was to carry out a petty form of revenge against Son Goku, but since he died before they were even finished, the doctor planned on unleashing his creations upon the galaxy to make him the ruler of all. It was with grim satisfaction to learn that Jero was killed by his own creations, androids 17 and 18 before the doctor's schemes could be completed. It was also lucky that those were the only two androids left after they destroyed Jero's lab after killing him, though the cell project survived due to it being in an underground bunker. It was also with some luck that Naruto inhabited the one and only organic android Jero could create, because he had this feeling that more would destroy the entire planet. Naruto had no intentions of following the doctor's designs for him no matter how much the computer drilled it into him to do so and how it was his destiny to become the perfect warrior he knew from personal experience that becoming a good fighter took years of hard work not just some genetic modeling in fact he planned on helping to defend the earth now with goku gone with his new powers alongside goku's friends that was until the computer started giving him new data that made his weak body tremble in rage since their escape from dr jero 17 and 18 had apparently gone on a killing spree in the past year, killing most of Goku's friends and decimating Earth's population. Naruto hated people like the androids, who used their powers simply to hurt others for their own amusement. Naruto vowed that absorbing the two would be the only programming of Jero's that he would follow. Naruto didn't care so much about the, becoming perfect, idea as he was about stopping the androids from their trail of destruction even if he had to incorporate those evil beings into his body. He could simply destroy the androids, though Naruto figured it'd be more ironic using their own power to repair the mess they made. Naruto then started to learn of all the secrets his body contained. He learned many new techniques from both the computer and his acquired cells, 
some so devastating that they could destroy entire planets. He also learned that when he absorbed 17 and 18 his body would transform into a completely new form to match his power, and he also learned that his body was capable of becoming a living bomb for a final self-destruct if he ever grew desperate enough. As the years passed, Naruto became aware of his new body as he was actually able to move to a certain degree, so he moved closer to the glass of his tank to get a glimpse of his reflection. What he saw shocked him to say the least. His body resembled that of an insect larva, with newly forming chitin coating his body, horn-like appendages on his head, four legs, and a beak-like mouth. He learned that his appearance would change as he got older, so he sank back into the tank and let his body strengthen and grow to adulthood. Years later, uh, is it just me, or is this thing getting a little snug? Naruto thought as he pushed one of his stubby legs against the glass tank. His form had grown a considerable amount since his birth. Instead of looking like a mix between a bug and a fetus, his appearance was now more insect-like, with the chitin fully formed and hardened to his body in a greenish-brown hue. He now stood as tall as a large dog walking on all fours, and was considerably wider than that. What really stood out were his eyes though. They were their usual sky blue color, yet there were no whites and his pupils formed long slits, similar to when he used Kurama's chakra. Unfortunately, this newer form pressed hard against the glass tank, causing hairline fractures to spread over its smooth surface. Clicking his beak-like mouth impatiently, Naruto thought, oh screw it. With that, he began to push on the glass with all four of his limbs, causing the glass to further crack until it shattered completely sending shards of glass and fluid raining down onto the ground. His larger body fell to the ground with a thump as he took his first breath of fresh air in years. Naruto flexed his new body and let out a satisfied hiss as he felt his cramped joints pop deciding to explore his new surroundings. Naruto started walking around the bunker on all fours. Man this is annoying. The insect-like android grumbled in a raspy voice as he tried to get used to no longer being bipedal. He was like this for the next few hours, trying to explore the vast laboratory while on all fours. Finally, he discovered the exit and moaned in satisfaction as he felt the wind whip against his face. Suddenly though, he felt a building sensation forming in the pit of his stomach. W what's going on? Naruto wondered as his limbs suddenly locked up and his pupils dilated. Suddenly, he felt his back harden and crack like dry wood, and he suddenly felt the urge to stand up and stretch. Naruto suddenly found himself looking down at his body and blinked his eyes in both surprise and to get the fluid that covered his entire body out of them. Looking down, he idly noted he stood on two legs and took in his new appearance. Unlike his larval form, the newly formed cell was fully upright on two legs. His facial features were similar to his previous one, and he still retains beak-like mouth along with his blue, slit pupil eyes. The two sections of his head shoot off in different directions in a V shape. He had orange color parts near his abdominal area, the back of his head, and even near his groin area. He had two wings which are both emerald green with black spots. He had an emerald green and lime green mix all over his exoskeleton, including head, arms and legs. He had three fingers and three toes. Naruto also found a whipping tail with a stinger included at the end of it that extended from his back. He had black sections as well near his abdominal area, in the middle between the two sections on his head, and even the black part of opposite side of his tail. Naruto even has azure veins in both of his arms, legs, and even some in the upper body. Naruto stared down at his body for a long time, getting used to all the new feelings he was experiencing. The energy coming from his body was incredible. It felt similar to chakra, yet different in many ways. He also noticed he could sense ki for miles around, similar to how in his previous life he could sense other beings using sage mode and later kayubi mode. The sheer power Naruto felt from Cell's body was staggering, and this was still his earliest stage. No wonder Jero kept boasting he was perfect. Naruto gave a few experimental jabs with his arms and legs, marveling at the speed, while stretching his senses to see if he could locate the androids. Unfortunately, Thanks to how the androids produced their energy artificially, there was no real set way to get a lock on them. Besides, even though he was strong, Naruto knew that he still wasn't at the level he should be before he takes on the androids. Naruto figured he'd train for a few months to get used to his new body and its powers, then he'd focus on finding the androids. But before that, asterisk gurgle, he needed to get something to eat. Scene break.
Naruto floated idly over the landscape, looking for a potential food source. He knew from the computer that his way of obtaining food was to absorb the biomass of humans and would receive an energy boost in equivalence to the power his victim held. Nuts to that, Naruto thought sharply, there was no way he'd ever go hunting after humans, especially innocent humans who were already terrorized enough by the androids. Instead, he was looking for some wildlife to hunt, figuring it'd be the same as eating meat. And besides, most of the larger animals were stronger than humans anyway. Cell heard a loud roar a few miles from his location. He flew off towards the noise and noted the irony that his wings were more for show because he could fly just as easily without them. Coming to the scene, Naruto saw an enormous T-Rex-like reptile cornering a family of black bears. Acting quickly, the bio-android flew down and latched himself onto the T-Rex's back. Going by instinct, his tail reared up and plunged its stinger into the reptile's back. Naruto suddenly felt an incredible sensation. It was like he ate an entire handful of soldier pills then washed it all down with a cup of coffee. As he absorbed the biomass of the dinosaur, it started to flail around but its struggles became progressively weaker and weaker till it fell to the ground, dead, and its body started to disappear up Cell's tail. Once the deed was done, Naruto gave a satisfied groan as he felt the new energy coursing through his being. Only a few more like that, and he'd feel ready to take on Madara again one-handed. He felt another large animal energy source nearby and grinned as much as his beak-like mouth allowed. Time for seconds. A few hours later, Naruto stared at the empty mountain range feeling significantly stronger. He still knew he wasn't strong enough yet to face his siblings, but a few more weeks would hopefully change that. In the meantime, it was time to give his new body a test run. Concentrating his energy, the insect-like being fired a beam of light at a nearby mountain and it was quickly reduced to rubble. Whoa, Naruto gasped as he stared at the smoldering rubble. And that was one of his weak attacks. He then landed in one of the forests located on the mountain and then practiced his katas while in his new form. Cell's form took some getting used to, what with the extra limbs and all, but soon he was able to fall into a comfortable pace and soon enough he was able to do multiple acrobatics of beings half his size. Naruto noted how much more powerful his punches and kicks were if his being able to split thick trees like they were splinters. Naruto then tried seeing how fast he could move by moving from one mountain range to another. While his speed was impressive, it wasn't quite the instantaneous, near teleportation he was used to by using Kurama's chakra. Cell's speed was more comparable to the Reikage's speed. Flying high up into the air, Naruto decided to try one of the techniques that the people who made up his body knew. Cupping his three-fingered hands at his side, he started to chant, Came, Haim. A brilliant light started to build up in his hands before he released it in one burst with a cry of, Ha! The large blue energy wave speed towards the ground and there was a large explosion. Peering through the dust and debris, Naruto saw his attack had caused a significant crater to form in the earth, almost the size of a lake. Giving a satisfied grunt, Naruto said in Cell's raspy voice, Well, I could most definitely get used to this. He then began to practice his other attacks in preparations for the fight he had planned. Several weeks later, Cell hovered over a ruined city with a frown adorning his beak-like mouth. By going to one of the abandoned cities near his location, Naruto was able to find a working radio that, with a little work, was able to get on a channel specifically dedicated to tracking 17 and 18's movements. The brave newscasters had tracked the androids here, where they were currently wreaking havoc. Naruto felt his power course through his body and, thanks to the data provided to him from the computer, was satisfied that his current strength was more than enough for him to take on the evil androids. He thanked days of feeding on large and powerful dinosaurs, as well as constant training for that. An explosion occurred at a nearby building and Cell sped off in order to end the pointless violence. When he arrived, Naruto gritted his teeth in anger. Dozens of bodies littered the ground, some with burn marks to show energy beam damage, some were beaten or crushed to death and some were in such small parts that you couldn't tell what was a full person or multiple people. Standing in the center of the carnage were two teenage-looking beings, a boy and a girl. The boy had black hair, an orange bandana tied around his neck, a black t-shirt over a white long sleeve, ripped jeans held up by a gun belt, long green socks and blue shoes. The girl meanwhile had blonde hair done similar to the boys with a long-sleeved black and white striped shirt with a blue vest on top, black pants, and brown boots. 
They looked very similar to each other besides this and they both had piercing blue eyes, gold hoop earrings, and finally a logo on their shirts that looked like a red ribbon with two R's stitched on them. The girl was holding up a little girl, probably no older than seven, by the front of her shirt while she cried, the boy. Android 17 just stood by with a smirk on his face. The girl, Android 18, lightly slapped the crying girl across the face saying, shut up, this of course made the child cry harder. Geez kid, didn't your parents ever teach you to be quiet? Now I'm glad we killed them, 17, said with a dark chuckle. Hey 17, I'm getting annoyed by his whining. Want me to shut him up? 18 said while she pulled back her fist. Hey, do what you want 18, 17 said with a lazy wave of his hand. 18 gave a dark grin and went in for the kill, but before the fist could make contact, the child was yanked from her grasp and a solid punch met her cheek, causing her to go crashing into a nearby car that collapsed from the force of the blow. Standing where 18 was, Cell stood with his eyes narrowed in rage with his one fist outstretched from where he hit 18, while his other arm cradled the child gently. The kid had stopped crying and was looking up at her savior in both awe and fear, before the monstrous looking creature gently set her on the ground and asked, Are you hurt? To which she hesitantly shook her head and then the creature asked, Do you think you can run? This time she nodded slightly and the thing gave what might have been a smile and said, Then you should get out of here you don't want to be around to see what's about to happen. Don't worry, I'll make them pay for what they've done. The girl gave another nod before quietly whispering a, thank you, and went rushing away from the area. 17 meanwhile, was helping 18 out of the wreckage of the car and they both glared at the creature. I don't know what kind of horror show reject you or buddy, but you've just signed your death warrant. 17 spat out while 18 brushed the debris off her clothes. Shut up, Cell hissed at the duo. I really don't care what you have to say. At first I was just going to end you quickly but now I'm going to make sure you suffer before I end you. With that he got into a fighting stance. Hey, you're going to end us? 18 said incredulously, I'd love to see you try. Yeah. The boy named. Trunks, already try and die failed to beat us. What made you think you make any different? 17 asked. Let's find out, shall we? Cell said. Bring it, freak. 18 yelled. With that, all three combatants jumped into the fray. Naruto as Android Cell, charge at two evil androids, 17 and 18. He decided to absorb Android 17 first. As Ninja turn Android and two real androids nearly collide, Cell suddenly disappear and reappear behind Android 18. Before she react, Naruto swing his tail, knocking her few miles away. Turn to Android 17. I'm saving her for dessert, you are the main course, Cell hissed. Is that so? We'll see about that. No one is as strong as me, 17 said. Android 17 and Naruto Cell charge at each other. They punching, kicking, dodging and blocking in the speed of light till Naruto land a big blow on 17's stomach, knocking air out of 17. As 17 try to reclaim some air, Naruto got behind 17 and punch him to the ground. Naruto stomp on 17's back, kneel down and throwing more punches on 17. How do you like being bullied, ah? Uh, Naruto asked in rage. Naruto cell got off of Android 17. 17 slowly got up and went back fighting stance. Without warning, cell kicked 17 up to the sky. Naruto appeared before 17 got to the spot where Naruto is, then punch him to the building, threw it and 17 land on the ground hard. Very, very very hard. 17 is so injured and weak, he can only watch as Cell stood before him, having his tail over Android 17. Time for your punishment, Naruto said. But, before Naruto going to use his tail to absorb 17, Android 18 show up and kick Naruto away from her twin brother. Naruto Cell fly through few feet away before stop himself in midair. She's faster than I thought, Naruto said, 18 look at 17. Look at you, brother. Being beaten by an oversized bug like freak. You're pathetic, 18 said in a muse. S shut up. I'm just getting warm up, 18 said. Whatever, 18 said. Maybe I should handle 18 first before I absorb 17, Naruto thought before he went on fighting stance. Stay down and I'll show you how it's done, 18 said. Just watch out. I get a feeling his tail is his only weapon. 17 said while look at Cell's tail. 
Android 18 just ignore her brother as she move forward a little, enter her fighting stance. Surrender yourself. 18 said to Cell. What, to a ugly boy looking girl like you? Cell asked, amusing. Ugly. Why you freak? 18 said in rage, overheat rage, maybe in hellfire rage. With that, female android charge hard. Naruto rushed to 18 as well. Both fly high and battle hard. Even if Naruto is power up by dinosaurs, Android 18 keep up with his speed. They fly to the ground as they punching, kicking, dodging and blocking then went separate ways. They stare at each other. While they do that, everyone come out of hiding and watching them. What is this creature? A woman asked. Don't know, a man said. It's fighting with the evil androids. Maybe it's a new hero, Man 2 said. You might be right, Man 3 said in happy mood. Then, our prayers have been answered, Woman 2 said. We're all going to be saved, Woman 3 said. Naruto began to power up his energy with glowing aura wave around him before he charged to Android 18. 18 charge as well. With that, Android 18 throw a punch. Naruto dodge. 18 make other punch but this time, Naruto grab her fist. 18 try another punch but Naruto grab that too then kick 18 on the face, sending her flying. Android 18 stop in midair. I had enough of this in you, 18 said. With that, Android 18 power her energy wave, making it bigger than fire at Naruto. Naruto cell cross his arms to block the attack. The attack hit Naruto and cause a cloud of dust. As the dust settle, Naruto is now missing his right arm and his tail. Android 18 land near her slowly getting up brother, Android 17. What are you going to do now? With only one arm, you won't last longer, 18 said with dark smile. Now everyone is getting worry. Their last only hope is now close to death. Oh, really? Naruto asked with a smile. Everyone look at a bug-like creature in confuse. Naruto look out his roar like yell then suddenly, his right arm and tail pop out fast. Everyone even the evil androids was shocked. When I lose arm, leg or tail, I just grow new ones. I have ability to regenerate my body. Petty cool, ah? Uh, Naruto asked with security tanking Dr. Jero for Piccolo's cells. I have to admit, that petty good trick, but you still won't beat us, 17 said, spit out some blood. We'll just have to see about that, Naruto, cell said. This time, we'll rip you to pieces, 18 said as she and her twin brother went on fighting stance. You have to catch me first, Naruto said. With that, Naruto power up again. The androids charge in as Naruto as well. 17 went to punch him but Naruto dodge and kick hard on male android. Suddenly, android 18 got behind Naruto, grab his tail and swing him around few times before letting go, sending Naruto to the building. Android 18 land near the building and firing her infinity bullet. A while later, android 18 stops. That should teach him a lesson. 18 said before turn to 17. Let's go, brother. 18 said. Go ahead. I'll catch up, 17 said. Whatever. 18 said before fly off. Android 17 then turned to everyone who watching the battle. Look like another hero has fallen. That goes to show. No one is as strong as her than me. And now to have my fun with you guys. Android 17 said with a dark chuckle. But unknown to male android. Naruto Kami knows how, survive the attack and slowly land behind 17, raising his tail over him. Android 17 look at the ground and see a large shadow. 17 turn and saw Naruto alive. By going by instinct, the tip of Naruto's tail suddenly opened like a blooming flower, becoming a wide funnel with a dark, forbidding hole in its center. You cannot escape your punishment, Naruto said in rage of what he heard 17 said. With that, Naruto's funnel tail quickly covered 17's head and shoulders, pinning his arms to his sides. The funnel closed around him, Android 17 muttering as Cell's powerful tail muscles began to draw him into the tube like a snake ingesting its food. Naruto lift 17 off the ground and watch him as 17 kicking, trying to get out of his tail with no effect. Slowly, Android 17's body slid through Cell's tail. The bulge that contained the evil android enter through Naruto's back, merging with him. While watch in shock, Naruto feels his power rising even higher. 
Suddenly, Naruto glow bring as his body slowly transforming. After a big flash, Naruto now stand in his new body form. His hands has four fingers and has golden fur. His face is like wolf or fox's face with red eyes. His feet are now like paws. His tail is now golden fur and his exoskeleton and wings are now dark green with yellow spots. He look like a hybrid between fox and insect. As everyone look at Naruto in awe, shock, Naruto self throw punches, trying out his new form. So, this is what it feel like when I absorbed Android 17. It feel great. Now to absorb Android 18 and use their powers to rebuild and restore things, Naruto thought. With that in mind, Naruto took off in the air and seeking for evil female android. Wow! Naruto did it! He absorbed Android 17. What do you think of Naruto's second form? Melra wants the other two forms were changed a bit, maybe making it so they're a mix of Naruto and sell more. And so I try. I know Fox may not be right, but let's not forget that Naruto has the nine-tailed fox so long and he did get his whiskers like Mark from nine-tailed as he sealed inside Kashina. I hope that's all right, Melra. Android 18 is now in the next ruined city, in clothes shop, looking for some new dresses. Really, don't there ever make new dress? Female Android asked herself. By the door, a turquoise hair woman named Bulma, point her really big gun at 18. This is for my husband and son, you murderer, Bulma thought. With that, Bulma fire her gun but the bullet just bounce off of Android 18. 18 turn and stare at Bulma, slowly made her way to Bulma. Bulma moved backward while firing which will do no good. Android 18 disappear and reappear in front of Bulma. Before Bulma react, 18 grab Bulma's neck, lift her up and slowly squeezing her as Bulma kicking her legs. You humans don't know when to give up, do you? 18 asked. Bulma didn't answer as she slowly losing life. Android 18 laughed darkly as she watched Bulma dying in her bare hands. A hand place itself on 18's shoulder. 18 slowly turn her head while saying. Android 17. Took you long Eno, female android was cut off by a fist hit her face hard, sending her flying as she let go of Bulma who fall but grabbed by the tail. 18 fly few feet away before stop at midair and saw her attacker. It's Naruto with Bulma wrap in his tail, but because Naruto is in his new form, 18 didn't recognize him. Another freak. 18 asked. You don't seem to recognize me, Naruto said with Nine-Tailed's voice. No I don't. 18 said. Well, maybe this might help, Naruto said in Cell's raspy voice. 18's eyes widen. You, what happened to you? 18 asked. Well, let's just say I transform after I deal with your twin brother, Android 17, Naruto said, back to his normal voice, in his second form. You what? 18 asked in shock, and now, it's your turn, but first, Naruto said. Naruto cell settle Bulma down, you okay? Naruto asked. I think so. Bulma asked, not believe who, what the thing just saved her. Good. Now get to safely. I'll handle her, Naruto said. Bulma nodded and run off to the safe zone then watch the incoming battle. Now to deal with you, Naruto said, turning to Android 18. Naruto power up and walk to 18. He murdered my brother. Android 18 thought. Naruto then running to her, 18 with murder in her eyes, charge in as well. You murdered my brother, I'll kill you, 18 said in rage. As they got close to each other, Android 18 jump and try to land a kick on Naruto. Before she land, Naruto disappear, making 18 miss him and hit the ground hard, causing the cloud of dust. As the dust settle, 18 look around, looking for Naruto. Running away, have you? 18 asked. Suddenly, a big shadow cover 18, quassing her to look up, seeing Naruto about to land on her. Nope. Just about to have fun, Naruto said as he coming in hard. 18 jump out of the way, meaning Naruto just missed her. Naruto charge at 18. They punching, kicking, dodging and blocking for the while before Android 18 take off high. Naruto follow fast and they went back to punching, kicking, dodging and blocking but it seemed Naruto has upper hand. Naruto grab hold on 18's head and punch her hard on the stomach, knocking the air out of 18. As 18 try to get some air back, Naruto kick her hard to the ground face down. 
Naruto's tail, wrap 18's arms behind her back then wrap around her neck, lift her up in front of him then start to punching and kicking her for the moment before Naruto swing his tail, throwing Android 18 to the building. Android 18 slowly slide down to the ground. 18 slowly got back up, only be kicked to the air by Naruto who disappear and reappear before 18, knocking her to right, disappear, reappear then kicking her to the left. 18 stop in mid-air, coughing some blood. This monster is stronger than last time. What's happening around him? 18 thought. Suddenly, Naruto appear in front of her, kicking her to the ground hard. 18 in her injuries, slow got on her hands and knees. She look up, see Naruto land in front of her. Android 18 got up fire her energy wave at Naruto, pushing away. But Naruto then, walk back to 18. 18 power up her energy wave to make it bigger and fire on Naruto again, pushing him even far away but Naruto still walking to her. I suppose I could absorb her now, but I still want her to suffer some more, Naruto said. When Naruto cell finally, stand in front of Android 18, 18 went fighting stance, but Naruto in fast, punch her stomach then kick her high. 18 stop in midair again but Naruto in speed appear in front of her and punch her hard on the face. Is that all you got? Naruto asked. Android 18, now in a bit of fear, firing her infinity bullet at Naruto, causing some smoke around him. A while laster, 18 stop, patting as she believes she finally destroy Naruto. When the smoke clears, Naruto floating around, unharmed. That was a good show. Naruto said, back where Bulma is, she watched the battle. Who or whatever that thing is, he's very strong. Maybe Android 18 might have meet her match. Bulma said. Trunks, if only you were here to see this. Bulma thought in sadness. Back in the battle, Naruto disappear and reappear in front of female Android, kick her few feet away before disappear and reappear over 18, punch her to the ground hard. 18 slowly got up, even though she very, very weak. She may not last much longer. I won't give up, he murdered my brother and I will have my revenge. Android 18 said in rage. Naruto land few feet away from 18. In outrage, 18 charged that Naruto, punching hard on his chest even though it not making effect on him. Naruto let 18 do it for the while before Naruto slam her to the ground hard. That was fun, but now, it's dinner time, Naruto said. Android 18 got to her knees, coughing some more blood. Enough of this, it's time for your punishment, Naruto said. I I won't. Give up. You murdered. My brother. 18 said in rage and weak voice. You silly android girl. I didn't murder him. I absorbed him. Naruto said, shocking 18 and Bulma who heard that. A absorbed. Android 18 asked in shock. That's right. And now you will suffer the same fate as he did. Naruto said, raising his tail over 18. Android 18 watched the tail on top over her. The tip of Naruto's tail suddenly opened, becoming a wide funnel with a dark, forbidding hole in its center. Android stare the funnel in surprise and fear. In you go, Naruto just said. With that, the funnel went down on 18, who found enough strength to stretch her arms up and grab the sides of the funnel, try to keep the funnel as far away from her. But because the injuries from the battle, 18 is losing the fight. Female android could offer no resistance as her head and shoulders entered the hole, pinning her arms to her sides. The funnel closed around her. Naruto lift his prey up, watching her kicking. Suddenly, with Naruto have his tail close to himself, trap android kicking hard on the face, trying to make him let go of her. Naruto grab both android's legs and decide to have a payback, slap on 18's bottom hard, making her muttering scream. Moving his tail away from him. Naruto went to back to work. Slowly, Android 18's body slid through Naruto's tail. The bulge that contained the evil Android entered through Naruto's back, merging with him. Bulma was surprised and shock of what she just saw. He he shallowed her up. Bulma said, Naruto feels his power rising even higher. Suddenly, Naruto glow bring as his body slowly transforming. After a big flash, Naruto now stand in his new body form. He looked like his 19 years old self, but with yellow exoskeleton with red spots, five fingers hands, human-like feet, wings disappear, 
Head crests are small, like Cells Jr. or Cell after he absorbed Krillin in a game. His tail is now red with yellow spots and his eyes are gold. He also wear a white cape with fire around the bottom. It is over, Naruto said. Naruto take to the air. The evil androids has been defeated. We can now restore things. Naruto said to everyone from the city and far. Everyone who heard that, starting to cheer, now those monsters are gone, they can finally relax. Naruto land to the ground while Bulma watch. I can believe it, absorbing the androids just to stop them and protect us. He's really on her side, Bulma said in happy tone. Bulma run to meet Naruto. You defeated two androids by yourself. You must be really strong, I'm Bulma. Bulma said. So that's Vegeta's wife and Trunks' mother. Naruto thought. Well, do you have a name? Bulma asked. Oh, right, my name is Cell. Naruto Cell. Naruto said. Nice to meet you Cell Naruto Cell. Bulma said. Naruto just laugh at what Bumla mistake thought. It's Naruto Cell, but just call me Naruto. Naruto said. Okay, Naruto, you're on our side, right? You can protect us, right? Bulma asked. I thought no one ever asked. Because I'm your man, Naruto said, giving Bumla a big fox-like smile. Well, that's the end of the evil androids. But will that be enough to restore the life? Just wait and see. What do you think of Naruto's new form? Pretty nice, right? Anyway, see you all soon. It's been a year since Naruto is Cell defeated. During that time, Naruto and Bulma worked together to restore life through the earth. They used Bulma's brain and Naruto's muscle to lead surviving people. They help re-establish governments and with rebuilding cities. Also while he's not busy, Naruto training his new form as well as making new combo move like the Kamehameha wave and special beam cannon, calling it Kamehameha beam cannon. Right now however, Naruto is busy, playing with kids, using his tail as the skipping rope as the children sings. Teddy bear, teddy bear, turn around. Teddy bear. Teddy bear, touch the ground. Teddy bear, teddy bear, show your shoe. Teddy bear, teddy bear, that will do. Teddy bear, teddy bear, go upstairs. Teddy bear, teddy bear, say your prayers. Teddy bear, teddy bear, turn out the lights. Teddy bear, teddy bear, say good night. After playing with the little ones, Naruto fly over the city. When he near the graveyard, Naruto saw everyone there, even Bulma crying for the ones they've lost to evil androids. Naruto just watched them, feeling lost that they couldn't save them because he was still young and small. While later, Naruto stare out of the window of living room. Bulma allow Naruto to live with her. Bulma enter the living room, going to give report to her only friend. We just finish repairing the school so children can learning again. Bulma said. Naruto didn't say anything as he keep on stare. Hello. Earth to Naruto, come in, Naruto, over, Bulma said, waving her hand in front of Naruto's face. Naruto snap out, oh, sorry, I guess I'll still felt bad about what the androids did while I wasn't ready to stop them. If I can go back in time to stop them, I could. Naruto said. Going back in time, Bulma asked in herself, that it, Bulma said. What it, Naruto asked in surprise, come with me. Bulma said, heading to the backyard. Naruto, incuriously, follow Bulma. When they in the yard, Bulma took out the capsule from her pocket, pushed the button and throw it to the ground. With a big puff of smoke, the big ship-like machine appear. This is the time machine. Trunks was going to use this to get back in time after he destroy the androids to tell his friends. Unfortunately, the monsters destroyed Trunks. You can use it to go way back to stop them. Bulma said. Bulma, you are genius, but I can't leave the world unprotset. Naruto said. With that, Naruto groan. A big bulge slide through Naruto's tail from Naruto's back. Naruto's stinger open up and something slide out. It's a 12 years an orange version of himself. He'll take my place while I'm gone. Now, time to go. Naruto said. But there's one problem. The time machine is too small for Naruto. Ah man. Come on, Naruto said. Suddenly, Naruto remember Goku turned to Super Saiyan and Frieza transforming forms. Maybe I could do the same, Naruto thought. With that thought, Naruto focus his energy. 
A while later, Naruto's body began to glow and slowly, Naruto is transforming. Standing now is Naruto's 16 years self. It worked, Naruto said, but Naruto realized something, he's bare naked. Oh man, Naruto said, cover himself while blushes, turning his face cherry red while Naruto Jr. laugh at him. Bulma cover her eyes. Jay just a moment, Bulma said, running to the building. A while later, Bulma return with some clothes and head to the brush where Naruto is hiding. These used to be trunks. Bulma said, Naruto reach his arm out, grab the clothes and pull them in then starting to put them on while Bulma set up the time machine. A while later, Naruto come out, wearing black shirt, blue jeans and brown shoes. Okay, it all set. You just need to push the button and the machine is set off to where it's designed to go. I also pack up few things you might need. Bulma said. Thanks. Wish me luck, Naruto said. With that, Naruto climb on the machine, push the button and both he and the time machine disappear. Good luck, Naruto, Bulma said. Time. Month before meeting Dr. Jero and Android 19. The time machine suddenly appear out of nowhere in the forest. The glass hatch open and Naruto with a bag climb out. Naruto turn turn to machine, point his plam at it and fire energy ball at it, destroy it. There, now no one will use it. But this attack seemed to be low. Must have used my energy too much to transform. Naruto said. However, Naruto is felt lonely from before even with Bulma by side and evil androids inside him and he know why. Hanada, I miss you, my wife. Naruto thought in sadness. Naruto decide to look through the bag to see what Bulma give him. Just two things a tent capsule and a what Naruto learnt from computer, dragon radar. Just then, a light bulb glow inside his head. That's it, I'll use the dragon balls to bring Hanada to this world, Naruto said. With that, Naruto turn on the radar and starting to search for the balls. Nearly two weeks, Naruto managed to find five dragon balls which are in the bag he carry, with his still low energy. What he doesn't know is that his human form is much weaker than other forms. Anyway, Naruto is standing on the road. Man. How did Goku do that? It's hard than I thought, Naruto said. Naruto then, look at the radar. That's weird. The radar said two last balls are moving and heading to me. Naruto said. Just then, behind Naruto is a fast moving car. The driver saw Naruto and hit the brake, stopping the car near Naruto. Naruto turned and saw a car behind him. He then turned to his radar, seeing the balls must be inside the car. Group of thieves climb out of the car. Hey, what's a big idea, blocking the way? Thief 1 asked. I think he lost his mama. Thief 2 said then laugh with others. All right, you brat, get out of the way. Thief 1 ordered. I will, if you give me the dragon balls. Naruto said. No way, they're us. Thief 3 said, and when we find other five balls, we get to make a wish for riches. Thief 4 said. Just then, the balls in Naruto's bag, are glowing. Hey, he's got one or more with him. Thief 5 which is the only female said. Alright kid, hand them over. Thief 1 said, made his way to Naruto. Big mistake, as soon as he got close, Naruto suddenly punch him to the rock, knock him out hard. Oh, you little, Thief 2 said, pull out his handgun. Before he fires, Naruto disappear and reappear in front of Thief 2 throw couple punches and single kick. Moving to Thief 3, Naruto punch him on the stomach then knock him to the ground. Going to Thief 4, who is big chubby one, Naruto just walk to him but Thief 4 jump on him, crushing him, only to be lift up by Naruto. Naruto throw Thief 4 in the air and kick him to female Thief 5, pinning her to the ground under her big friend. With the thieves taken care of, Naruto head to their car, break of the door and pick up two last dragon balls. That's all of them, Naruto said. With that, Naruto flies off, leaving the thieves to the police when they get there. A while later, Naruto return to the, the same forest where he appear with time machine. Naruto lay out the dragon balls. The dragon balls glow brightly and the sky darken. With a big flash, a giant green long serpentine dragon name, Shenron appear. What is you wish? I'm waiting, Shenron said with his deep voice. Okay, he can grant one wish a year. 
I need to make it count. Naruto thought. Hurry up, make a wish, Shenron said impatient. Okay, I wish for my wife, Hanada Hyuga back to me. Oh, while you at it, could you have her prime and ready for whatever this new world throws at us? That should be too hard, right? Naruto asked with hope. The giant dragon stares at his summoner. Quote dot dot dot, I can, Shenron said. All right, Naruto said. With that, Shenron's eyes glow bright. Meanwhile, old Hanada is playing card games with old Sakura. How do you think he's doing? Hanada asked. Your husband, knowing him, he'll go out and do some hero work. Hey, what's happening with you? Sakura asked. I'm just worried about Naruto, that's all. Hanada said. Not that, you're getting younger, Sakura said. What? Hanada asked in shock. Hanada looked at her hands, seeing them getting young. What's happening to me? Hanada asked. Your husband is wishing you back to his side once again. And I'm going to allow it. The reaper said as he float near them. Hear that, you get to be with your husband again. Sakura said, happy for her friend. But I must warn you, your new life will be vastly different from your old one. Your new body will be same and different at the same time. Also, the energy you use will be different from the one you knew, so it's up to you to recreate any of your old techniques. The Reaper said. Hanada nodded, really want to see Naruto again. Then off you go, the Reaper said. With that, the Reaper thrust his palm forward and struck Hanada in the chest, then all went white. Lab of Dr. Jero, one of the android capsules is glowing before the glow pull from it and disappear. Back with Naruto, in front of Shenron, two orbs appear and collide or is it mixed together before it become android capsule with 21 mark on it. The capsule land near shocked Naruto. There, it is now done, Shenron said. Great, that dragon just brought her here as an android, Naruto thought. Now, I must go, Shenron said. With that, the giant dragon blow and disappear then the dragon balls float up and went separate ways. I didn't mean turn her into an android, you stupid dragon. Naruto said to the sky. Oh boy, I hope Hanada isn't a killing android like the other two. Naruto thought. Naruto made his way to the capsule, push a button then stand back as the door of the capsule open up, showing 15 years old Hanada Hayuga who opened her eyes and slowly got up and out of the capsule. Okay, where am I? Hanada asked as she looked around. Hanada, a voice asked behind Hanada. Hanada turned and saw who she thought she wouldn't see him till later on, Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto, Hanada said in happy as she run to her husband and hug him. Oh good, Hanada is still the same, Naruto thought. Hanada then let go of Naruto and moved back a bit. Where are we? Hanada asked. We are in Earth, Naruto said. Earth, Hanada asked. That's right, I'm going to save this world and I would like you to be on my side like you always did. Naruto said. Okay Naruto, I'll help you as best as I can. Hanada said, holding out her hand near her capsule. And fire a beam from her hand and destroy the capsule, scaring Hanada's new life out of her. Quote dot dot dot, first means first, we need to do some training. Naruto said. WW what was that? Hanada asked, and some explaining while we at it. Naruto finished. After less of month. Naruto explained to Hinata as well as training her to prepare of anything of their new home world. Just then, Hinata with her new android skills, sensed something. Naruto, I sense some powerful energy nearby, Hinata said. We better check it out, Naruto said. With that, they fly to the energy user. It feel like, but he should be dead at that time. Naruto thought. A while later, they have arrived near what look like a battlefield. They see the warrior Z along with what look like Dr. Jero. There in the center, is two fighters, one is a man who has spiky black hair that never changes throughout the franchise. He is most commonly seen wearing his trademark orange, red golden GI over a dark blue undershirt. The GI has kanji on its left side where his heart is. He's Goku. Other, who sitting on Goku, is also a man whose consists of completely white skin, two dangling earrings, extra large orange pants, an extra large banana white strap on vest, a broad red sash, and an orange pointed hat with a red ribbon army logo on the front. He is overweight, and has pointed, light blue cold eyes. 
He's according to Naruto's knowledge, Android 19. His hand is on Goku's neck and absorbing Goku's energy. Goku, he's supposed to be dead. Naruto said in shock. He will be if we don't save him. Hanada said. Android 19 darkly chuckle as he draining until a powerful kick sent him away. Everyone turn and saw a girl that kicked the android with a boy with her. Who on earth are they? Yamcha, the man who has black hair and wears the same GI as Goku but with opposite kanji, asked. I don't know, but I only sense one of them, the boy. Krillin, the short man with bald and wears same GI as others with the kanji on his chest, said. Then that means she must be an android. Gohan, a teen boy who has black hair and wears a black GI and also he's the son of Goku, said. That's impossible, I never built her. Dr. Jero, an old man who consists of slightly tanned skin, blue eyes, a large bushy white mustache, and long hair. He also has a red ribbon army logo located on the hat, said. That surprise everyone, even now just appear, Vegeta, a man who has firmly stands upwards black hair and wears Saiyan armor. Android 19 looked pretty mad at Naruto and Hinata. Naruto looked at laying hero. He picked Goku up and throw him to the Namekian, the humanoids with slug-like characteristics, including antennae, light green skin, and pink patches appearing throughout his body, he wears purple GI with white hat and cape. He's Piccolo. He's unconscious, but alive, Naruto said while hide his surprise, shock tone. Kakarot needs his medicine so he can live and I can beat him. Vegeta said. Medicine. I thought there's no medicine for heart virus. Naruto thought. I'll take him. I'll just be in the way. Yamcha said, placing Goku on his shoulder. With that, Yamcha with Goku, fly away. Android 19 is about to go after them but Naruto suddenly appear in front of him, blocking the way. Going somewhere, Naruto asked as Hinata land next to her boyfriend. Drive Jero, I want to destroy them. 19 said. Very well, but keep that seem to be android alive. Even if I never built her, I can reprogram her to obey me only. Dr. Jero said. Fat android nodded before he turned to two teenager heroes. We like to see you try, fat head. Naruto said. With that, the three androids went their fighting stance. As everyone watched, the wind blow gently with Hinata's long hair waving. Suddenly, 19 charge and punch on Naruto hard on the face. 19 smile but a while later, his smile disappear as Naruto didn't feel a thing. Suddenly, Naruto kick Android 19 to the sky. Hinata appear in front of 19 and both punching, kicking, dodging and blocking for the while before Naruto appear behind 19 and knock him to the ground hard. Android 19 got up and stare at boy and girl in rage as they land gently. Hinata, careful, Android 19 can absorb energies by glass on his palms. Naruto whispered. Hinata nodded and charged at evil android. 19 tried to throw a punch, but Hinata dodged it and punch hard on the stomach then kick him in the air, meeting Naruto from the sky. Naruto grab 19's arm, spin around and release him to the ground hard. Hinata head to the crater where Android 19 lay motionless on the center. Suddenly as Hinata is close enough, 19 got up fast and reached his arms to Hinata. Hashtag let's see this in. Slow. Motion. Hash. Android 19 open his palms, ready to grab Hinata. Watch. Out. Krillin call out in slow motion. Suddenly, Hinata grab one of 19 wrists, spin around and grab other wrist. Knock 19 to his knees and pull his arms behind him, trapped him in death lock. Hashtag ok. Let's get back to the fight hash. Let me go, you stupid girl. 19 said as he tried to get free. Naruto land few feet away from Android 19. Sorry, it's time for you two to go and here's your goodbye present. Came. Naruto started, cupping his hands at his side. No way, that's Goku's Kamehameha wave, Piccolo said in shock. Haim, Naruto chatted as a brilliant light started to build up in his hands. But, you destroy both of us. 19 said in fear, hoping to use Hinata as she hold behind him, as a shield as in stopping Naruto to destroy him. Nope, just you, Hinata said with a smile. With that, Hinata rip Android 19's arms off and fly off. Ha, Naruto finished as released it in one burst. The large blue energy wave speed towards 19. 19 tried to get out of the way, but not in time, 
the wave hit evil android, there was a large explosion. Peering through the dust and debris, everyone see nothing but 19's head with broken dome as top head. Dr. Jero sneak behind Hanada, reach his hand to her, only to have his hand cut off by say girl. Don't ever touch me, only my boyfriend can touch me, Hanada said as Naruto join her in the air. Well, you're fast, I'll give you that, and you boy, you're strong. But there's something about you that I can't put my finger on it. Dr. Jero said. Suddenly, Dr. Jero disappear that what normal I see. Dr. Jero actually running very, very fast. Hey, he's running away. Tien, a man who has no hair and three eyes, wearing hanfu robe with loose pants and boots, said. That was easy, too easy. Why is he running away just like that? Unless, Naruto thought. Suddenly, Naruto's eyes went widen and charge off, after Dr. Jero. Naruto, wait up, Hanada call out, following her boyfriend. Others follow also, what's wrong, Naruto, Hanada asked as she got up with Naruto. Drive Jero is going to his lab and awaking two powerful androids, Android 17 and 18. Naruto said. Hanada's eyes went wide and she and Naruto starting to seek for Dr. Jero. Dr. Jero run through rocks and boulders faster than a blink of an eye. A while later, Dr. Jero hide behind the giant boulder as Naruto and Hinata arrive nearby. Damn, we lost him, Naruto said, looking around. Naruto, you've reborn in his lab, surely you know where the lab is. Hinata said. The lab has been destroyed before I was awakened. I have no idea where it is or what it look like. Naruto said. Reborn. Now this has started to get really interesting, Dr. Jero thought. Just then, Z fighters have arrived with Piccolo appear right in front of Naruto and Hinata, looking angry for what? You got me. All right, who are you two? How did you learn the Kamehameha wave, boy? And how did you come with an android? Are you two working for Dr. Jero? Piccolo asked, a lot. I can't tell them that I'm supposed to be android cell, or from the future or from other world. So. Naruto thought. Piccolo, calm down, I don't think they're with Dr. Jero. Tien said. Right, they did save dad, Gohan said, but it could be a trick or even a trap. Vegeta said while hiding his angry of the fact that those two weaklings have beaten the android 19 before he could. I can assure you, we hate Dr. Jero as much as you do. Naruto said, still looking for Dr. Jero. Just answer the questions, Piccolo said. Okay. Okay. No need to lose your head. We'll tell you, Naruto said. Hanada nodded. My name is Naruto, Naruto said, and I'm Hanada. Naruto if I mean girlfriend, Hanada said. And my dad's Kamehameha wave. Gohan asked. Well, Naruto tried to find a work that could help. Lucky, his girlfriend came to the rescue. Naruto was a big fan of the old world tournaments and saw Goku fight when Goku was a kid. Since then, He's being training day in and day out till he could use his own key. Hanada said, lied. Yeah, what she said, Naruto said. Really? Gohan asked. And how is it you with that android girl? Krillin asked. Well, a month ago, I was in the forest, training then after that, I took a walk till I decide to sit on the boulder but the boulder I sat on, is actually a hidden button, opening the secret door. I decide to check it out when I saw an old man which we were after. Dr. Jero and laying on the table is Hanada. Dr. Jero is turning her into an android. Lucky for her, I managed and beat Dr. Jero, and rescued her before the doctor could erase her memories and personality aka nearly compete. So you guys could say that she's 65% android and 35% human. Naruto said, lied. Now, that is a lie. I never saw the girl until now and I never, ever built someone or something like her. Who is that boy and why is he different than other humans? Dr. Jero thought. Well, you save my father. So, you have my thanks. Gohan said. Not a problem, Gohan. Now we must find Dr. Jero before he awaking two most powerful androids. Naruto said. Right, Gohan said. Hey, how did you know my name? Gohan asked in surprise. Drat, way ago, Naruto. Naruto thought. Lucky, his girlfriend save him once again. Before I was recused, 
Dr. Jero sent some informations into my nearly android brain. So I told him about you and others, even your father. Hanada said, lied. Never mind that, let's find Dr. Jero, spilled up, Piccolo said. Right, everyone but Vegeta said. With that, they went different ways with Naruto by Hanada's side. Dr. Jero decided that he should get the Z fighters one by one then go after Naruto and the seem to be android. Meanwhile, Naruto and Hanada land on the cliff. Damn, his energy signal should be sensed by now, Naruto said. Naruto then notices Hanada looking at her hand she used to cut Dr. Jero's hand off. What's wrong? Naruto asked. Look at my hand, Hanada said, holding out her hand. All I see is beautiful dry hand, Naruto said, not knowing what his girlfriend meant. Exactly. My hand should be covered with bit of blood when I cut Dr. Jero's hand off. Naruto eyes widen with realizes. You're right, he should bleeding sometime unless. Naruto started. Unless he's the android as well. Hanada finished. Android 20. Naruto and Hanada said. That's why my android name is 21. Hanada said. And as an android, I won't be able to sense him. Naruto said. Meanwhile with Dr. Jero or is it Android 20, anyway he decide to target Piccolo first. Dr. Jero slowly float up, coming into unknown Piccolo. When he's close enough, Dr. Jero charge at Piccolo, place his only hand over Piccolo's mouth and wrap his remain arm and legs around Piccolo. Well Piccolo, it will seem you've found me. Dr. Jero said as he absorbing Piccolo's energy. Piccolo try to get free as best as he can. It's no use. You can't escape me, Dr. Jero said. Meanwhile, floating near the ruined city, is a man has blue eyes and straight, light purple hair, wearing an indigo capsule corporation jacket, a black tank top, gray pants, and golden boots. He's Trunks from the future. Look at this, if only I arrive early, Trunks said. Trunks then sense energy nearby. The battle must be nearby. Then I'm not too late, Trunks said before fly off. Meanwhile, Naruto and Hinata with their different ability, sense it. Piccolo's energy is getting lower. Naruto said. Drive Jero must have got him. Hinata said. We have to move fast. Naruto said. With that, Naruto and Hinata fly fast, following the low angry signal. Dr. Jero darkly chuckle as he draining Piccolo's energy. Piccolo is getting weaker as he limd a little. Suddenly, Naruto from behind. Knock Dr. Jero off, removing his metal hat off. You're okay, Piccolo. Hanada asked as she join in. Yeah, I'm fine, thanks, Naruto. You, save my, life, Piccolo said. No problem, Naruto said. Dr. Jero stare at those three with rage. Inside the dome on his head is. Look, we were right, Dr. Jero is an android with his brain. Gross, Naruto said. He must have built his android clone and have one of his androids to move his brain from his former body to his android body. Hanada said. Suddenly, Gohan, Krillin, Vegeta and Tien appear, surrounding Dr. Android Jero. Krillin, throw me the Senzu bean. Piccolo call out. Krillin nodded, took out one bean and throw it to Piccolo who catch it and starting to eat it. Things is starting to go bad on me, Dr. Jero said. Piccolo swallow the bean and regain his strength. And now to finish you off, android. Piccolo said, about to take off his cape and hat. Stay out of this, Vegeta said. Everyone look at the Saiyan prince. The only one who's going to battle him is me and me alone. Vegeta said. Definitely remind me of Sasuke. Former leaf ninjas thought. Quote dot dot dot. Fine, have it your way, Piccolo said. Vegeta smile at this wild glare at Dr. Jero. Dr. Jero smile as well as he believe he will win. Suddenly, Vegeta yelled as he power up. What surprise everyone is that Vegeta's hair and eyebrow turn golden, his eyes turn greenish blue and golden aura wave around him. Vegeta is now a super saiyan. Everyone is so shocked. How did? Krillin asked. How did I become super saiyan? You were going to ask. It's quite simple. I train my body day in and day out till I become a super saiyan so I can fight and beat Kakarot. Vegeta said with a smile. Dr. Jero even if he saw the transforming with his own android eyes, still believe he can win. With that thought, 
Dr. Jero charge at SS Vegeta with his only hand open. Vegeta with his mean smile, Dodge then kicked Dr. Jero hard to the ground. Dr. Jero slowly got and stare at the Saiyan prince with rage. Meanwhile, Bulma, and quite overweight man who's have small, beady black eyes, long, untidy black hair, wearing a sleeveless, knee-length red yukata with black stripes, a black obi, black wristbands and black kyahin, waraji, and an echu fundoshi, names yahirobi, and a little light purple hair, baby names trunks, are riding in Bulma's airplane. Suddenly, older trunks fly past them at very high speed. Hey, that was the man who defeated Frieza and his father, King Cold. Let's follow him, Bulma said. Before Yahirobi can say a why thing against, Bulma power the let's say, turbo charge and speed off after them. Meanwhile, Dr. Jero skip around like a silly stone on THR ground. Dr. Jero got up and stare at his enemy in rage. I must get to my lab, Dr. Jero thought, that idiot, he needs to destroy him not toying with him, Naruto thought. Just then, Hanada sensed something. Someone is coming, Hanada said, look to her left. Everyone looked to where Hanada looking. Coming to them as trunks. Trunks, I thought the androids destroy him. Does this mean the time I know has already changed? Naruto thought in shocked surprise. Is that an android? Trunks thought, looking at Dr. Jero. Trunks then notices Naruto and Hanada. What the, who are those two? I can't sense energy from the girl. That means she's an android as well. Trunks thought. Well, welcome back, Trunks. We just about to destroy this adroid just as we destroy other one. Krillin said. But, that's not the android I talk about. Trunks said. What, that's not the android you warned us about? Vegeta asked. Just then, Bulma's airplane arrive in the battlefield. Hi, Bulma call out. Oh no, what's Bulma doing here? Naruto asked in worry. Dr. Jero stare at Bulma's plane. Perfect, Dr. Jero said. Enjoy this short-lived victory while you are able, for soon I will unleash androids 17 and 18 to destroy you all. Dr. Jero said. 17, Piccolo asked, and 18 inches Vegeta asked. Oh no, Naruto said. Suddenly, Dr. Jero blasts Bulma's airplane and causes it to crash. No, Trunks said, while everyone are distracted. Dr. Jero managed to make a run. Bulma, Gohan yelled. Guys, Bulma's voice asked from above. Everyone look up and saw Bulma under Naruto's arm while Hanada hold baby trunks in one arm and hold back of Yahirobi's shirt with other. Naruto then saw Dr. Jero, getting away. You can't escape, Naruto said. Naruto touch his index and middle fingers of free hand, to his forehead. His two fingers glow. Wait, that's my... Piccolo said in shock, special beam cannon, Naruto chatted. Naruto's fingers are extended forward and unleash two beams from Naruto's fingers, one remains straight while the other coils around the straight beam. Dr. Jero managed to jump out of the way. Drat, missed him, Naruto said. Naruto and Hinata land on the cliff. Naruto set Bulma on the ground then Hinata, after dropping Yahirobi, give Bulma her baby. Trunks, oh my baby, thank you too. Bulma said to Naruto and Hanada. No problem, Bulma, come Hanada, we can't let Dr. Jero get away, Naruto said. Right, Hanada said, and with that, Naruto and Hanada rush ahead. Dr. Jero run faster to get to his lab. Further away, Naruto and Hanada chase down. We have to find him or the lab, Naruto said. Hanada nodded. Meanwhile, the remain Z fighters after Vegeta and Trunks fly off starting to find the lab as well. Split up, Piccolo ordered. With that, they went separate ways. Meanwhile, Dr. Jero arrive at Northern Mountains where his lab is located. Look like I win our little race game, Dr. Jero said to himself. Dr. Jero then, jump rock to rock and boulder to boulder till he reached the cave. Suddenly, he sensed something behind him and turned to see Krillin. I found it. Better signal the others. Krillin said. With that, Krillin forces his key to send signal. Everyone even android Hinata with Naruto sense it and head to the location. He bring the others all he want. It will be too late. Dr. Jero thought. With that, Dr. Jero head to the steel door with code lock. He enter the code and the door open. 
When he went inside, the door closed. Dr. Jero grabbed the remote device from the wall before all the lights went on. The three capsules are lined up against the wall each with different number, 17, 18 and 19, while capsule with number 16 on it, lays on the middle of the floor. Dr. Jero head to the android capsule with number 17 with a bit wary. I had hoped not to activate them again so soon, but I guess I don't have a choice, Dr. Jero said. With that, Dr. Jero pressed the button and the door opened. Just then after that, Android 17 walk out of his capsule. Ah yes, Android 17, Dr. Jero said. A young male android turned to Dr. Jero and stare at him in his remote. Good day doctor, how are you? 17 asked. Good, you remember me, Dr. Jero said. Why of course. You gave me life, 17 said. Good, he seems to be in working order, Dr. Jero thought. And now for Android 18. Dr. Jero said, push the button on capsule with 18 mark. Android 17 watches as th door of Android capsule open, letting out Android 18. 17 look at his sister like giving a secret massage. 18 look at her brother, turned to see Dr. Jero and saw the remote in Dr. Jero's hand. Hello doctor, you're looking well. One said. Good, you remember me as well. Dr. Jero said. How can I forget? 18 asked. Good, both are seems to be in perfect well order, Dr. Jero thought. Meanwhile, others arrive near Krillin. There, there's his lab, Krillin said, pointing at the cave. So that's Dr. Jero's lab before the androids destroyed it, Naruto thought. Any sign of Dr. Jero? Hanada asked. Well, he's in the lab right now, Krillin said. What? Everyone but Vegeta asked. Why didn't you say anything about that? Piccolo asked. Not waiting for an answer, they made their way to the giant steel door. While everyone tried to get through the door, Hanada stared at the code lock. Suddenly, Hanada's eyes scanning the code and I mean scanning like android which lucky for he or she is. 4, 1, 9, 5, Hanada said. What? Tien asked while everyone looked at good female android. The code on the door is 4, 1, 9, 5. Hanada said. Are you sure? Krillin asked, look at the code lock near him. Just do it, Hanada said. Okay, 4, 1, 9, 5, Krillin said, pushing code buttons. Suddenly, the steel door opens, showing Dr. Jero and his two androids, Android 17 and Android 18. What the, how do you know the codes? Dr. Jero asked in surprise and shock. I simply scanned your codes, Hanada said with a smile. Even if she didn't know she can do that. I never ever built androids with the scan like that. She's even more better android than I thought. I must have her. Dr. Jero thought. Alright. Androids 17 and 18. Destory them but leave that android girl alive so I can reprogram her. Dr. Jero said. Suddenly. Android 17 snatched the remote from Dr. Jero's hand. W what are you doing? Dr. Jero asked. This is what you use to shut us down, isn't it? 17 asked. Then 17 crushed the remote to bits. Dr. Jero did not like that one bit. 18 turned to see a laying capsule. What's in here? 18 asked as she made her way. No, stay away from that. Don't activate Android 16, Dr. Jero said. Android 16, Trunks, Naruto and Hinata thought at the same time. And why not? 18 asked. It's a prototype. If you activate 16 now, it will malfunction. Dr. Jero said. 18 didn't seem to care as she made her way to the button on the 16 capsule. I'm warning you now. I'm your creator. You will do as I say. Dr. Jero said. Suddenly from behind Dr. Jero, Android 17 punched through him. Everyone even Vegeta and Hinata was shocked at sight. Naruto and Trunks on the other hand, narrow their eyes, knowing what going to happen next. Why you dare attack me? I gave you life, Dr. Jero said. Android 17 didn't say anything as he kicked Dr. Jero's head off and I mean off like off of his body. The head land near the Z fighters and good androids not that the Z fighters know that wink. D damn that robot, now I'm mad, Dr. Jero's head said. 17 then fire his energy wave at the head and destroy him, it. 17 stare the fighters with the smile before he turned to his twin sister.
Well, activate him already, 17 said. Android 18 nodded and about to push the button. If they set that android free it will be the end of all of us. Trunks said. That won't happen, I won't allow it, Naruto said. With that, Naruto formed the circle hand sign near his chest and start chant. Came, Haim, Naruto chanted. Wait, that's not the stand for Kamehameha wave, Piccolo said. Ha, huh, Naruto chanted. I know it, that brat is very stupid. He and his android girlfriend got lucky against Android 19. Vegeta said with the smile. Suddenly, a brilliant blue light started to build up in his hands with yellow light mixed with it. Everyone but Hinata is so shocked. Beam cannon. Naruto finished. Naruto forward his circle hands and unleashed two beams from Naruto's hands. Large blue one Kamehameha wave remains straight while the yellow one special beam cannon coils around the straight beam. The beams enter the lab and the lab and walls around it explode, with Z figures managed to get out of the way. Could you just warn us next time? Krillin asked. Sorry, but at least I got rid of the androids. Naruto said. When the smoke settle, standing unharmed, are the androids with 18 holding the capsule? No you didn't, Hanada said. Android 18 then put the capsule down and finally pushed the button. The door open and stepping outside is a man who has orange mohawk, blue eyes and wears gold earrings, black clothing and green armor. He's known as Android 16 and believe or not, he's tall, very tall, towering at over double the height of other androids. Why? Hello fellow android. How long were you kept inside the pod? 17 asked. Giant android said nothing, can't speak. 17 asked. Drive Jero said you are not to be activate. Do you know why? 18 asked. The huge android still say nothing. Strong silent. Ah, very well then. Let's go. 17 said. Where are we going? 18 asked. Isn't it obvious? 16. Dr. Jero program you to destroy Goku, right? 17 asked. That is correct. 16 said. Well, you can speak. 17 said. But before they set off, Naruto punch hard on 17's face while Hinata kick hard on 18's head. But what shocked Naruto and Hinata is that two of three evil androids didn't feel a thing. Was that the best you two got? 17 asked. Suddenly without warning, 17 knee hard on Naruto's stomach while 18 punch hard on Hinata's, knocking the air out of Naruto and Hinata. As the good androids try to reclaim some air, the evil androids knock them to the ground. Now, stay down. There's good little doggies. 18 said, amusing. To think one of those two is an android. Now, where were we? Oh yes. 17 said. This time, three evil androids fly off. The good androids slowly got back up on their knees and hands and coughing some blood. What happened? I beat these androids from the future. How can I get knocked down like that? Naruto thought. Naruto got on his knees and looked at his human hands then realized something. Of course, I beat them as cell. It seems my human form's strength is right between Piccolo and Super Saiyan Vegeta. I'm not strong enough against the androids in my human form. I need to return to my perfect form, but I can't with the others watching me. Naruto thought. Well, look like those two are weak and useless. Look like it's my turn to beat them. Vegeta said. With that, Vegeta went after the evil androids but he didn't get too far as trunks fly in front of him, blocking the way. Get out of my way, fool. Vegeta said. No, father, you have to listen to me. We're no match against the androids. We need to wait for Goku too. Vegeta cut off Trunks by stomach. As Trunks tried to reclaim some air, his father fly past him saying. Out of the way, Vegeta said. Piccolo stare at two strangers. Krillin, give them some Senzu beams. Piccolo said. Ah, Krillin asked. I may not trust them, but Naruto did save my life and Hinata saved Goku. I believe we own them. Piccolo said. Right, Krillin said, made his way to the injured heroes. The rest of us, we must follow Vegeta, Piccolo said. Everyone nodded, and with that, they glow with aura wave around them and took off. Meanwhile, Naruto and Hinata are now back on their feet when Krillin land next to them. You two okay? Krillin asked. At least we know I still get pain as an android, Hinata said. Well, have the Senzu beams. 
They'll make you two better. I'm not sure if it work on Android's thought. Krillin said. Won't know unless we try. Hanada said. Take a bean Krillin offer. Naruto took his as well and both of them popped the beans into their mouth. After few chewing, Naruto and Hanada swallow and like by magic, they regain their strength and the wounds are healed. Okay, let's go, Naruto said. With that, Naruto, Hanada and Krillin speed fly off to catch up with the others. Meanwhile, Android 16, 17 and 18 land on the road on the mountain. Why are we here? 18 asked. We are here to catch a car and ride to Goku, 17 said. But we can fly, why should we get a car? 18 asked, not in a mood for a car. Because we never drive a car before, 17 said. Just then, Vegeta land few feet away from the androids. So, there you are, Vegeta said. The androids turn to meet the Saiyan prince. It's time for me to send you to the junkyard, Vegeta said. Well 16, show us what you got. Destroy him. 17 said. Quote dot dot dot. No. 16 said. What did you say? 17 asked. I will only fight Goku. 16 said. Fine then. I'll go. 18 said. Moving forward. So. It's lady first. Ah. Well. Don't think I'm going easy on you. Vegeta said. Suddenly. Vegeta yelled as he power up. What surprise everyone is that Vegeta's hair and eyebrow turn golden. His eyes turn greenish blue and golden aura wave around him. Vegeta is now a Super Saiyan. Vegeta and Android 18 stare at each other for looking at my watch forever till Vegeta charged to 18 and throw punching and kicking and all 18 ever did was blocking while move backward. Meanwhile, Krillin, Naruto and Hinata manage to catch up with others. I sense Vegeta's energy signal about few meter away. Hinata said. We better move faster, Piccolo said. With that, they speed up. Meanwhile, Vegeta kept on attacking while 18 blocking till she decide to end her little game by suddenly knee Vegeta on the stomach. Vegeta was surprised at this attack. She's been toying with me all along. Vegeta thought. Vegeta in rage, power up a bit high and charge and land a big kick hard on 18's head but 18 grab Vegeta's ankle and spin around few times before release him. Vegeta send through the ground few feet till he stop at midair. 18 managed to get behind Vegeta and land her most powerful kick on Vegeta's arm, broken his bones in his arm. Vegeta scream in pain. 18 decide to finish Vegeta off. She point her palm at falling Saiyan Prince and power up her energy wave, but before she fire, she sends trunks in his Super Saiyan form, charging at her with his sword. Android 18 blocked the attack with her arm and broke the tip of the sword. The others land near trunks. Well, Look like Vegeta's friends are here. 18 can handle them by herself but I think I should give her a hand. Unless you want to fight 16. 17 said. No, I told you, I will only fight Goku. 16 said. Okay, suit yourself. 17 said, made his way to the Z fighters. Head up, other android is on the way. Tien said, seeing android 17 on the way. When Android 17 join up his twin sister, Android 18, they and the Z fighters stare at each other. Then suddenly, Naruto and Hinata charge at the evil androids. 17 and 18 dodge their attack and at the same time, kick their attackers hard, sending them up to the sky then appear before them and knock them to the ground, really, really hard. Piccolo and Trunks attack as well. 18 charge at Trunks and punch to the cliff wall hard. Knock him out while 17 swing his fist hard on Piccolo. Piccolo fall to the ground, knock out as well. Hanada and Naruto slowly got up and together with Tien and don't really care, Vegeta charge at androids. 18 dodge Hanada's attack and kick hard on Vegeta's stomach then knock him very hard to the ground, this time, knock him out for good. With Vegeta out of the way, 18 turn to see Hanada cup her palms together and power up her energy wave to make a very big ball bigger than a beach ball. Hanada fire her energy wave at evil counter female android, but to her surprise and shock, 18 managed to knock the attack away like it was a fly. Now then, fallow android, come join us, 18 said. And me a killer like you. No thanks, Hanada said. Fine then, 18 said. Suddenly, 18 disappear and reappear in front of Hanada and punch her on her stomach knocking her air out of Hinata then knock her to the ground hard. 
Hanada turn around to her back and stare at 18 weakly. Naruto and Tien handle 17 but 17 punch Naruto away and knee Tien on his stomach and knock him to the ground. Tien is too weak to get up now. 17 then turn his attention to Naruto who cupping his hands at his side. Came, Haim, Naruto chanted. A brilliant light started to build up in his hands. Ha, Naruto finished his released it in one burst. The large blue energy wave speed toward 17 but somehow, 17 knocked the powerful wave away like it was nothing. W what? Naruto asked. Suddenly, Android 17 appear and kick Naruto on the head hard. Naruto send flying few feet away till Naruto stop at mid-air but 17 already in front of him, knock him hard to the ground next to his girlfriend. Where Krillin is, Krillin is so afraid that he badly move. Suddenly, Android 17 and 18 appear few feet away from him. They stare at short man for the while before turn away and made they way back to Android 16. It's obviously there be no cars coming. Let get the ride somewhere else. 18 said. Right. 17 said. A while later, 17 and 18 land near 16 who watching the birds flying away from the battle. Let's go. 17 said. 16 just stare at the sky. What's wrong? 18 asked. You were too noisy. Your battle have scared the birds away. 16 said. Birds, come now. We got work to do. 17 said. Wait, hold on. Krillin's voice said. Androids turned to see Krillin land few feet away from him. Leave Goku alone. He's really sick and can't fight right now. Why are you going after Goku? Krillin asked. Quote dot dot dot. It's because 16 was programmed to kill Goku. And that we will do. It's all a game. 17 said. But Hinata is an android but she choose not to follow her program and you guys can do so as well. Krillin said. Quote dot dot dot. No. I programmed to destroy Goku. 16 said. There you have it. Now, forces on your friends. They going to need these Senzu beans. 17 said. 18 move to Krillin. Give him a big on his cheek. Good luck, cutie. 18 said. Krillin just stare at the female android with his face turning red. Bye. 18 said, joining her brother and friend. With that, the androids fly off. Quote dot dot dot. Oh right, my friends. Krillin said before made his way to his friends. Krillin land near Naruto and Hinata hose now sitting, and take out the sack full of Senzu beans. I only have at least six beans left. Krillin said. Then don't worry about us. Go help the others. They'll need it more than we do. Naruto said with his girlfriend nodded. Krillin nodded and went off to help others. A while later. What? They know about the Senzu beans. Piccolo asked. After others recover, Krillin report of what happened. Vegeta, being a sore loser, take off. Knowing his father will be alright, Trunks turned to two new people. I don't think we introduce ourselves. I'm Trunks. Trunks said. I'm Naruto and this is my girlfriend, Hanada. Naruto said. Hanada wave at Trunks who narrow his eyes. You do know she's an android, right? Trunks asked. Don't worry about that. She's not like the others. I managed to save her before she was compete. Naruto said, knowing Trunks won't trust Hinata that easy and even if he wants to, he can't blame him. Hi guys. A woman's voice call out. Everyone turn and saw Gohan carring Bulma and baby Trunks, heading to them. Gohan, you were supposed to take them home. Piccolo said. I was but Bulma keep on saying to check on you guys. Gohan said. After Gohan land, Bulma with baby trunks in her arms, run to Naruto and Hinata. I never catch your names. I'm Bulma and this little man is trunks. Bulma said. So, that's baby trunks. Naruto thought. Well, I'm Hinata and this is my boyfriend. Hinata said. Okay, here's the plan. You guys get to Goku's house and move them somewhere safe. Piccolo said before take off to somewhere. You heard Piccolo. Hinata and I will go in training to be prepared. Naruto said. Hanada nodded. However, before two good androids take off. Wait, where do you live? I want to visit you sometimes. Bulma said. Well, we live in the tent here and there. Naruto said. Wait, you mean you don't have a home? Gohan asked. Not really. We are planning to build our own house somewhere. Hanada said. 
Oh no. No heroes of ours are going to live in the wild. Right Trunks? Bulma asked in her baby. The baby smiled at his mother. You two and staying at my house. Bulma said, managed to hug Naruto and Hinata with one arm. How? You asking the wrong writer. But, no buts, it's at least we can do. Bulma said, cut Naruto off. Naruto and Hinata stare at each other with Hinata's face turn a bit of red seeing how close Naruto is to her. Something never change, ah. Quote dot dot dot, okay, we'll be home before dinner. Naruto said. Perfect, here a map to my house. Bulma said, handing the map to Hinata. Thanks, Hinata, pocketing the map. With that, Naruto and Hinata take off elsewhere to begin their training. Oh no, the evil androids are on their way to battle Goku. Can Z fighters save Goku till he gets better? Stay tuned. Next time, Naruto, Hinata and Piccolo are in the town which is empty. They turn and meet. So, we finally meet. Face to face, Piccolo said. But Naruto was shocked of what he see in his own eyes. What wrong with Naruto? And he's not only one who's shock. Trunks, Gohan and Bulma found an old machine that looked familiar to Trunks. But after that, they found something else as well. What did they find? Find out soon. It's been three days since the Z fighters, Naruto and Hinata got their butt kicked by the evil androids well two of three of them. Piccolo went to Kami's place, Naruto and Hinata have been training in trunks, Gohan, Yamcha and a woman who has black eyes and hair that tied in a bun still had her hair coming down on the sides, and wears a purple uniform with pink sleeves and pants, named Chi Chi, transporting Goku safely but Chi Chi is making sure that Gohan is doing his homework. While flying in the plane, Gohan and Krillin told Chi Chi about Naruto and Hinata. Really, those two teens saved Goku? Chi Chi asked. That's right, Mum, Gohan said. Well, I would like to meet them. Chi Chi asked. Just then, the plane phone rings and Krillin press speaker mode. Hello, Krillin asked. Krillin, this is Bulma. Is Trunks with you? Bulma asked through the phone. Yeah, he's behind me, Krillin said. Well, could you put him on? Bulma asked through the phone. You're on speaker, Krillin said. Okay, Trunks, how many time machine did we as in your and future me, built? Bulma asked through the phone. Trunks was surprised at that question. We managed to make only one, Trunks said. Really? Well, someone found a time machine that looked like you but in bad condition. I'll send you the picture of it and you can have a look. Bulma said through the phone. A few minutes later, a picture has arrived and Trunks take a very good look at the picture. I I don't believe it. That is my time machine. Trunks said. You're sure? Yamcha asked. Yes. Mum, where did this thing found? Trunks asked. I'm not sure, but I think it's somewhere around sector 1050 west. You going to check it out? Bulma asked through the phone. Yeah, I must check this out. Trunks said. Okay. I'm coming too, I'll meet you there, Bulma said through the phone. But mum, Trunks said, now Trunks, a mother knows best. See you later, Bulma said through the phone before she hang up. You're sure there's only one of the kind? Krillin asked. I'm sure of it, Trunks said. Trunks, will it be okay if I come alone? Gohan asked. Gohan, Chi Chi said. Mum, don't worry, I'll be fine, I can take care of myself. Gohan said. You listen to me young man. You're staying put till your homework is done. Chi Chi said while hold arm full books. Everyone then anime drop for that. Mum, I'll finish them all when I get back. Gohan said. With that, Trunks and Gohan set off. Meanwhile, hey, mum, I'm going out for the while. Could you watch over Trunks for me? Bulma asked to a woman who had a thin frame and blonde hair and always close eyes, named, Mrs. Brief. Why sure sweetie, where are you going, Mrs. Brief asked. Oh, just go and meet, Trunks, Bulma said before went off. Bulma's mother was so surprised at what Bulma just said. Bulma got on her plane and take off to the west sector. Meanwhile, Trunks and Gohan fly to the sector. Trunks, about your world of the future, is it true that the androids have destroyed everything? Gohan asked. Yes. The androids have managed to nearly wipe out the world's population. 
Some of us escaped the city before it was destroyed. L we are forced to hit underground. Trunks said. That's horrible. Gohan said. A while later, they reached West Sector 1050 and began to search. Gohan then found the machine. Trunks. I found it. Gohan said. After Trunks joined Gohan, they land near the old machine. Gohan then saw a small plane in the sky. That must be Bumla. I go and get her. Gohan before he fly off. A while later, Gohan land beside Trunks and watches Bulma land her plane. Hi Trunks. So what do you think see your mother so young? Bulma asked. Trunks face turn red a bit. Well, you haven't changed one bit. Trunks said. Wait, you mean that? That I can still young and cute for even longer? Bulma asked in cheerful. Trunks took out a small box from his jacket pocket. Anyway, look at this. Trunks said, take out a capsule from the box. Trunks pushed the button then throw it near the old machine. After a big puff of smoke, Trunks time machine appear next to its old self. As you can see, this is the time capsule I travel back in. Trunks said, which means that old capsule isn't yours after all. Bulma said. They're both mine. I said we managed to build one time machine in the future. These two are one and the same. Trunks said. Really? I don't get it. Bulma said. Here, I'll show you. Trunks said, heading to an old machine. Trunks wiped the moss off, showing the letters. H-O-P-E. Hope. Bulma read. Yes. These are the letters you wrote just before I left. And you found the same thing on that other capsule. Trunks said. But then, what happened to the old one? It seems that the old one has been here for a really, really long time. Bulma said. Gohan and Trunks fly high to the glass hatch which seems to have a big hole on it. How wheeled. It's melted, but the blast came from inside. Why would someone want to do that? Gohan asked. Trunks, sweetie, any idea who have made that big hole? Bulma asked. I'm not sure. Stand back. Trunks said before push the button under the hatch. The hatch slowly open up and Trunks step in and found what seems to be couple of shells. What this? Trunks asked. Trunks picked them up. What have you found? Gohan asked. Hey, let me have a look. Bulma said. Gohan land in front of Bulma with the shells and give them to her. Bulma look at them before put them together, making it look like a purple ball with lumps on it. I think they are eggshells. Bulma said. Gohan and Bulma suddenly stare at the hole. You don't suppose whatever made that hole has come from the egg? Gohan asked. Trunks turned the machine computer on which seems to not have any energy off. Trunks managed to get the detail. It said this capsule has been here four years ago. Just a year before I arrived. Trunks said. Meanwhile, Naruto and Hinata stand face to face till suddenly, Hinata charge at Naruto and they punching, kicking, dodging and blocking. A while later, Naruto and Hinata are having a break with water bottles Bulma give them. Man, to think I defeat two androids in the future and be beaten by the same androids only here, they are far stronger. Naruto said. But we won't give up. Hinata said. That's right, I promised Bulma I'll stop the androids and I never go back on my word. Naruto said. With that, after their drink break, they went back to training. Meanwhile. The androids are driving a pink van with 17 driving it, 18 in the passenger seat and big 16 sit in the back in silent. 18, we are near the town soon. You might find nice dress there. 17 said. Perfect, I really need to get out this old rags. 18 said. Meanwhile, Trunks and Gohan just put the time capsules away with Bulma taking the eggshells and about to leave when Gohan saw something ahead and went to check it. When he found it, Guy, you better come look at this. Gohan said. Trunks and Bulma who dropped the eggshells along the way, made their way to Gohan who point at seems to be dead dead bug-like creature. W what is it? Do you think it's dead? Bulma asked in a bit of fear. Gohan and Trunks at the creature. I believe the thing crawl away after shed its skin. I bet that was what come of the eggshells and grow up. Gohan said, saw a long crack on the back of the creature. Maybe. But I never seen this thing before. Trunks said. Trunks kneel down next to the shedded skin and place his hand through the crack, felt wet and pull his hand which is now covered with pink purple fluid. It's still wet, 
which means the creature can't be too far. In fact, it could be near us, Trunks said. Bulma now getting even more scared, look around with Trunks and Gohan, looking for what shedded its skin. Guess who? Wink asterisk. Bulma, an old man's voice call out. Bulma scream out loud of fear. Everyone turn and saw a old short, stocky man who has gray, blue hair, a large gray mustache. He dons a white lab coat with a blue undershirt, and black pants and wears large glasses. His name is Dr. Brief, Bulma's dad, who seems to be carrying two large boxes. Dad, you scared the life out of me, Bulma said. Oh, sorry Bulma, Dr. Brief said, not knowing what's going on. Dr. Bryant, what are you doing here? Gohan asked. And what in these boxes, Dad? Bulma asked. Well, someone found these in the forest somewhere, so I went to pick them up for you to have a look. I was on my way back when I saw your plane and land nearby. Dr. Bryant said, putting the boxes down. Okay, let have a look, Bulma said. Trunks opened the lid of the first box, inside the first box are seems to be broken machine pieces. Trunks pick up a broken plate with letters, hope on it. What, another one? Trunks asked in shock. What's wrong Trunks? Gohan asked. These are or was the time machine. Someone must have destroyed it. Trunks said. Um dad, did you by any chance to find this along with the broken time machine? Bulma asked, point at the hardened bug skin. No, but the one in the second box was. Dr. Bryant said, point at the last box. Trunks opened the second box which it full of other broken pieces. I recognize these pieces, it the android capsule, Trunks said. Gohan pick up the plate with the number on it. 21. Do you think someone copy Dr. Jero's evil work? Gohan asked. I wish I know, Gohan. Trunks said. Meanwhile, Naruto and Hinata are now sitting on the stumps, having a big break after all three days of training. Few more training and they might be strong as the evil androids. Naruto. Hinata asked. Yeah, Naruto asked back. The androids, 17 and 18, are there really that bad? Hinata asked. Really bad. They destroy everything and everyone to their amusement. I should know, Naruto said. Flashback. Naruto is cell, first form, flying over the ruins and fire city, looking for the evil android 17 and 18. My babies, a woman call, believe that it could be the androids, Naruto land near the crowd which are watching the building on fire while the woman is holed back by couple of men. You can't go in there. It's too late for them. Man one said. No, my son and daughter are in there. Woman said. After hearing that, Naruto rushed past the crowd and jumped through the window. Everyone watch in shock and worry, what was that thing? Naruto kicked the door down and with kids in his arms, run out of the building before the building collapse. Naruto head to the mother. Here you go, ma'am. Naruto said, handing over the kids. Mummy, the kids said, my babies. The mother said, hugging her kids before she turned to Naruto, thank you so much. Mother said, you're welcome. What happened? Naruto asked. Those evil androids has set this building on fire. While we managed to get out, those two kids got trapped inside. Man 2 said. Naruto frowned adorning his beak-like mouth and his body shake with rage. Well, don't worry. I plan to defeat the androids once and for all. Can any of you tell me which way they went? Naruto asked. Really? They went that to north, the mother said. Thank you. Naruto said with a nod before take off. End of flashback. You mean... They were going to hurt the poor kids? Hinata asked of rage. Hey da, Naruto suddenly stopped when he sensed something. What the? Naruto asked. What's wrong? Hinata asked. It's wield. I could have sworn I sensed Goku, Piccolo, Vegeta and Frieza's energy at the same time. Naruto said. Quote dot dot dot. I sense it too. Coming at Ginger Town at about 10 miles form here. Hinata said. Then let's go. Naruto said. With that, Naruto and Hinata took off to Ginger Town. About HLAF a mile later, Naruto and Hinata sensed something coming to them. It's was Piccolo, who merged with Kami before heading out. Piccolo, Naruto said as Piccolo joined them. I take it you sense it too. Piccolo said. Yeah, that's right, we are heading there to check it out. 
Care to join us? Naruto asked. Quote dot dot dot. Just don't get in my way. Piccolo said, getting ahead of good androids. I'll take that as a, yes. Naruto said. Naruto, his energy level has somehow, increased. Hanada whispered to Naruto. I sense it too, no doubt about it, he must have merged with Kami. Naruto whispered. Kami, Hanada asked, the earth guardian who also the keeper of the dragon balls. Which means with Kami gone, the dragon balls are gone too. Naruto whispered. A while later, Naruto, Hanada and Piccolo. Kami, whatever, have arrived to Ginger Town which seems to be deserted. What happened? Hanada asked. I don't know, Naruto said. All over the place, there's some clothes that seems people have be sucked out of their clothes. Suddenly, Piccolo with his pointy ears, heard something coming to them. Piccolo turned and saw the creature near them. At last, we meet. Face to face, Piccolo said. Naruto and Hanada turn where Piccolo is looking and Naruto was in shock at the sight in front of them. All over the place, there's some clothes that seems people have be sucked out of their clothes. Suddenly, Piccolo with his pointy ears, heard something coming to them. Piccolo turned and saw the creature near them. At last, we meet. Face to face, Piccolo said. Naruto and Hanada turn where Piccolo is looking and Naruto was in shock at the sight in front of them. Back to the story, Piccolo, Naruto and Hanada stare at the creature who wipe out all people of the ginger town. At last, we meet. Face to face, Piccolo said. Naruto eyes widen at himself. Standing in front of them is Naruto's body when he reborn only the difference is the eyes, Naruto's mirror has got red instead blue. Suddenly, Piccolo and Hinata, if she can, started to sweat of shock. Holding by creature's hand, is a chubby man who just woke up, looking at the creature in fear and then notice Piccolo and others nearby and reach for them. Hey, you got to help me. Please, help me, man asked. What the, what are we sense in that thing? Hanada asked. It's power. I sense it somewhere before. Piccolo said. Impossible. How there's two of me? Naruto thought. Just then, a shirt by the wind, blow by near Naruto who saw it and resile something. Not me, but a complete version of Dr. Jero's ultimate moster, Cell. Naruto thought. Come on, what are you three waiting for? Help me, listen, I'm the richest man in town. I'll give you three whatever you want. Man said. With that, the rich man placed his hand in his suit jacket, digging for some before pull of lots of money and reach it to them. Here, take this and there's more where that came from. Rich man said. They just ignore him while they stare at each other. Well just Piccolo and Creature are, as the creature didn't notice Naruto and Hinata. The creature seems to be smile through his beak like more. Well, never thought I'll be seeing you, Piccolo. Creature said. Piccolo was so shocked of what the creature said. The creature finally notices Naruto and Hinata. Who are these two? I don't sense energy signal from the girl so she must be an android. The creature said. Hinata's eyes went wide. How did that creature know about androids or sense energy signal? I believe she's an older model. She's no threat to me nor is that boy who just a human who can use key. Creature said. Hey, are you three listen? Rich man asked. Whoever you are. Let him go right now, Hanada said. The creature stare at the girl for the moment before letting the man go, dropping him on the ground. Thank you, lady, take my money, all of them, rich man said while he crawling. The creature rise his tail with the stinger and stab it to the ground and the ground. The creature turned to see where the rich man should be but not anymore. Creature turned to see Naruto with his prey over Naruto's shoulder. How did he, how dare he steal my meal? Creature thought with mad. Naruto settled the man down. Suddenly, rich man grabbed Naruto's hand shaking it faster than a blink of an eye. You're save my life, I'll give you and that lady anything you want. Rich man said. Rich man stopped and let go of Naruto's hand, which it's still moving up and down fast till Hanada grabbed Naruto's arm to stop it shaking. W we'll talk about it later. For now, get yourself out of here. Naruto said. Rich man nodded and makes a run for it. All well, I have you and your friends instead, Piccolo. Creature said. With that, the creature power up, creating a big gust from him. What's going on? Piccolo asked in surprise. 
His power level increase even higher. Hanada said in surprise. Suddenly, the road they are on are breaking about because of the gust and force from the creature. Meanwhile, in far, far away town, a pink van park in front of the clothes shop. Android 16 and 17 sit still, waiting for 18 to pick a new dress. Really, how long does it take for her to pick out a new dress? 17 thought. Inside the shop, 18 is standing in front of the mirror. She's now wearing western cowgirl outfit. And from the look on her face, she's hate it. Are you sure this is the best outfit in your store? 18 asked to the store owner who wearing cowboy clothes. Eup, you won't better than that little lady. Cowboy said. 18 stare at the owner. Quote dot dot dot. So, how do you like it? Cowboy asked. What do you think I like it? It's hideous, but I guess I can't expect from a backwater place like this. Well, I guess it'll just have to do. 18 said as she made her way to the door. Hey, you can't leave without paying. Cowboy said. Watch me. 18 said, pass through the door. Android 18 got in the van and Android 17 drive off. Meanwhile, Gohan suddenly sensed that made him surprise and confuse. What's wrong, Gohan? Krillin asked. I know it sound weird but I sense two piccolos. Gohan said. Two piccolos. Yamcha asked in shock, Krillin, Yamcha and an old man who's bald, with a thick white Fu Manchu mustache and beard. He wearing his trademark sunglasses and wears beach clothes, named Master Roshi, forces their senses. Wow, he's right, Krillin said. Meanwhile, what's the matter? You and your friends seem afraid, Piccolo. Creature said. Far from it, how do you know that name? Piccolo asked. Well, one might say that, we're brothers. Creature said. In your dreams, Cell. If you had a brother, you'll have a twin brother, me. Naruto thought. The creature then laugh in evil ways. Meanwhile, Gohan, Krillin, Yamcha and Master Roshi step outside of Roshi's house. Gohan, are you sensing what I sensing? Krillin asked in shock. It's Frieza and his father. Gohan said. Meanwhile, trunks fly over sea, heading to Ginger Town. Suddenly, he sensed something that got him confused. What's going on? My father and Piccolo, they in Ginger Town with that new boy, Naruto and by guessing, Hanada. And if I didn't know better, I say Frieza is there too. Trunks said. Meanwhile, Vegeta is floating somewhere, sensing something that got him shock. Frieza, he's here with his father. But that's madness, Vegeta said. Meanwhile, I sense them too, Yamcha said. But that's impossible. I thought Trunks destroy Frieza and his father. Roshi said. So did I. Me too. But it's feel like they both alive and well in Ginger Town. Gohan said. Suddenly, they sense new thing that surprised them. Holy cow. Do you guys feel that? Krillin asked. I it's Goku. Roshi said. Yeah, he's there too. Yamcha said. Gohan fly up to the upstairs window and see his father sleeping like a baby I might add. But my dad is still here, sleeping. Gohan said. Everyone is surprised at this. Meanwhile, now, if you think you finish showing off, I want answers. Who are you? Piccolo asked. The creature stare at his opponent. Quote dot dot dot. Silly Piccolo. My secret will not be unlocked that easy. The creature said. I ready know our secret, brother, Naruto thought. No matter. I'll still destroy you, whoever you are. Piccolo said. And that goes double for us. Naruto said with his girlfriend nodded. The creature laughed. You three are even more amusing than I thought. The creature said. Piccolo then smile. Well, we'll see if you still feel that way after I beaten you. Piccolo said. Well, such fighter spirit. I will enjoy absorbing you and those two, Piccolo. Creature said. You keep using that name. It seems you are mistaking me for something else. So. Allow me to introduce myself, Piccolo said. With that, Piccolo suddenly power up, creating a force, pushing creature, Naruto and Hinata who now stand their ground as they watch. Suddenly, a dome of light bright the light lower, Piccolo is now cover of a bit electric. The Piccolo you know is gone. I am the Namekian, and as for you, well, your history, Piccolo or should I say, the Namekian, said. Well, I'm impressed Namekian. Your power is outstanding. I sure you will be a really good meal. 
creature said. Don't count on it. Un, well let's just call him Piccolo just to save confusing, said. That's weird, Hanada whispered. What's wrong? Naruto whispered. Piccolo or is it Namekian's power isn't high as it's supposed to? Hanada whispered. Wow, I guess he didn't want to waste his energy till he find androids. Naruto whispered. You know you made one terrible mistake. You should have never emptied this city of it people. Piccolo said. And why is that? Creature asked. Because as long as there are no innocent humans to get in the way, I'm free to fight you with the best of my ability. Piccolo said. Then, what's stopping you? Creature asked. You know, that's a really good question. Piccolo said. Piccolo then point his palm at the creature and power up his energy blast as the creature cross his arms in front of himself. Piccolo then fire the blast that's so powerful, it push the creature farther away and destroy the city. Wow, what power, Hanada said. Let's not let Piccolo have all the found, Naruto said. Meanwhile, the van suddenly stop. Android 17 and Android 18 climb out the van and head to the edge. What was that? 18 asked. It feel like explosion and a big one too. I wonder what it was. It much too far away to tell what it came from. 17 said. It came from Ginger Town. Two great powers are fighting each other there. 18 and 17 turned to Android 16 who just got out of the van. You mean your senses can detect power levels? Why didn't you tell us that before? 17 asked. Because you never asked. 16 said with a bit smile. Oh, fair enough. I don't suppose you can tell me who's fighting, can you? 17 asked. No I cannot, I do not have data on either one. However, my senses detect that one of these fighters is just as strong as you. 16 said. What that? 17 asked in surprise. However, my senses de. Quiet, I heard what you said. Your senses must be malfunction. No one is as strong as I am. I'm the most powerful fighter of all. 17 said. With that, 17 and 18 went back to the van while 16 looked at the mountains. Meanwhile, the creature pushed the rumbles off of him, sat up and saw Hinata coming at him. The creature got on his feet and tried to punch her but Hinata dodged, got behind him and punched the creature on the back of his head, making him trip. Creature got back up. The android girl's hand feel soft. Too soft. It like she's fleshy human. How can it be? Unless. Creature thought. Before he could finish the thought, Piccolo appear in front of the creature and try to land a kick, but the creature hope backwards few feet away before Naruto from behind, kick the creature, sending him spining fly to Piccolo. Suddenly, the creature stop in mid-air and fly higher as Naruto and Hinata regroup with Piccolo. So, the girl is a cyborg android just like the other two androids. Well, maybe I might be wrong about her. Creature thought. The creature then touch his index and middle fingers of free hand, to his forehead. His two fingers glow. Piccolo is shocked at this. Special beam cannon. Creature chatted. The creature's fingers are extended forward and unleashes two beams from Naruto's fingers, one remains straight while the other coils around the straight beam. Piccolo after knock himself back managed to deflect the attack. He's good, Piccolo said. Head up, Hanada said. Piccolo turned to his left and see the creature heading for him. Piccolo jump high with the creature follow him and throw lots of punches and Piccolo can only dodges. Naruto kick on top of the creature's head. Hanada charge at him. The creature try to slice her but once again, Hanada dodge and fly over him. The creature turn only to remember he forgot about Piccolo near him who kicked the creature to the ground hard. The three heroes land a few feet away. I must admit, you a lot stronger than I thought. But don't let that go to your head, Piccolo said. You have yet to see my full strength. I was not able to gather enough energy to reach my full power. Creature said. Why your full power? Hanada asked in surprise. So, he didn't get the androids yet. His timeline must be different from mine, Naruto thought. Why you moster? That's why you absorb those innocent people. Piccolo said after realize what the creature meant. Yes, it is their living energy that give me my power. Creature said. Who are you? What kind of twisted mind would think sent you here in the time machine? Piccolo asked. Good question. Naruto thought. The creature is so surprised at what Piccolo asked. Answer me. Piccolo ordered. 
The creature then smiled. I sent by myself, creature said. What? Piccolo asked. The time capsule is far too small for me in his form. In order to fit inside, I was forced to revert myself back to my larval form and enclose myself within an egg. Creature said. Piccolo and his helpers stare at the bug monster. Well, you seem to know me, Piccolo. But there's so much for you to learn. Creature said. With that, the creature cupping his hands at his side. That stand is what Piccolo see it before and was so shocked. The creature started to chant, came, came. A brilliant light started to build up in his hands. No, it can't be. What's going on? Piccolo asked in shock. He creature released it in one burst with a cry of, ha. The large blue energy wave speed towards Piccolo, Naruto and Hinata and there was a large explosion. Piccolo, Naruto and Hinata managed to dodge, going separate ways. Hinata stand on the ruined building, looking around. Where did he go? Hinata asked. Suddenly, something wrap around Hinata, trapping her arms to the sides and cover her mouth. It's the bug creature's tail who's standing behind her. Lady first, creature said. With that, the stinger is aimed at Hinata's uncover neck. With that, the creature cupping his hands at his side. That stand is what Piccolo see it before and was so shocked. The creature started to chant, came, came. A brilliant light started to build up in his hands. No, it can't be. What's going on? Piccolo asked in shock. He creature released it in one burst with a cry of, ha. The large blue energy wave speed towards Piccolo, Naruto and Hinata and there was a large explosion. Piccolo, Naruto and Hinata managed to dodge, going separate ways. Hinata stand on the ruined building, looking around. Where did he go? Hinata asked. Suddenly, something wrap around Hinata, trapping her arms to the sides and cover her mouth. It's the bug creature's tail who's standing behind her. Lady first, creature said. With that, the stinger is aimed at Hinata's uncover neck. Back to the story, Hinata wiggle her bind that is the creature's tail with the stinger aiming at her neck. Wiggle all you want, you cannot escape. Creature said. Just then, lot of tanks with the leader riding on one of them, arrive near them. The leader hold his binoculars to see Creature up close. That's him, leader said. The leader then pick up his microphone. You up there, we have you surrounded, do not make a resistance. Surrender immediately, or we will have to use force, leader said to the Creature. The Creature turned to the tanks, not looking happy. Fools. Can't you guys see I about to have my meal? Creature said. With that, the creature point his palm at the tank with the leader, creating red orb and fire at the tank. The leader and the driver got out of their tank before the orb hit the tank and destroy it. Open fire, leader ordered. With that, the tanks and the missile launchers fire everything they have. The bullets and missiles hit the creature and create dusts and smokes around the creature. Meanwhile, Naruto and Piccolo heard explosion near where they are and head to that sound. Meanwhile, when the dust and smoke settle, the creature along with his meal are nowhere to be seen. Bingo, leader said with the smile. Sir, up there, one of Soilders said, point at the sky. The leader look up and saw the creature and his prisoner floating high unharmed, laughing at the Soilders. The leader did not like that. Hit him with everything you got men, leader ordered. The missile launchers turn to aim at their target and fire every missiles they have. The creature point his palm towards the ground, sending forces hard. The missiles, can't handle that much force, lose their fire and sending themselves back down, towards the tanks. The soilders retreat before the missiles hit hard. That'll take care of those miserable roaches. Now we were we, girl. Creature asked. But before he did anything to Hinata, the creature saw Piccolo throwing a big rumble at him. The creature moved himself and Hinata a few feet apart, let the rumble pass them. Ha, you missed, creature said. Oh, did I? Piccolo asked with the smile. Ah, creature asked in confuse. Destructo disc, Naruto from the rumble Piccolo throw, chanted before he throw the disc-like energy at creature. The disc sliced through the creature's tail, making the creature scream in pain as Hinata lift the tail off of her. I believe this belong to you, Hanada said, swing the tail on the creature, sending him flying high. Now's my chance, Piccolo said before he charge. Suddenly, the creature grow a new tail. What? 
Piccolo asked in shock. Before Piccolo could act, the creature whip his at at Piccolo who move his arm for blocking and the stinger stab on Piccolo's arm, draining the life from it and rendering the limb useless and withered. Piccolo, Naruto said as he and Hinata are about to recuse Piccolo. The creature notices them coming, place Piccolo in a full body lock. He'd then remove the tail and place the stinger at Piccolo's neck, causing Naruto and Hinata to stop. The creature with Piccolo in his lock, land to the ground, followed by Naruto and Hinata. You may have saved your android girlfriend. You're smart, I'll give you that. But with only one arm, Piccolo won't escape me. And you two will stand back if you don't want me to kill him faster. Face it, you three are outmatch and outnumber. Creature said. Quote dot dot dot. Yeah, you're right, Naruto said. Hum, Creature asked. It's very clear we are no match for you and Piccolo can't save himself without his arm. We have no choice but to surrender. Hanada said, knowing what Naruto plan is. And so does Piccolo as he play along, faking try to get free. The creature nod notices, smile and laugh in the evil ways. So, you two brats have come to realize that it's over. But don't feel bad, boy. You and Piccolo will a part of something far greater than you can ever realize. Creature said. What do you mean? Piccolo asked. You and the boy will be absorbed into super being. Creature answered. The creature then turned to Hinata. Don't feel left out. I'm going to absorb you in the different way. Creature said. W what do you mean by that? Hinata asked. I'm going to swallow your whole body like a snake. Creature said with a creepy smile. How so? Hinata asked. Since you asked, you will go first then after that. I absorb your lovable boyfriend. And don't try to save her boy, if you don't want me to end Piccolo's life while I absorb the android. Creature said, pushing the sharp stinger close to Piccolo's neck. If you're going to kill me, could I at least know who and what you are? Piccolo asked. And why you have Goku's energy in you? And freezes in Vegeta's? Naruto asked, even if he knew, he just playing along to fool Piccolo and his evil twin brother. The creature stare at his prisoner and the brats as he call them, for the moment before he smile. Very well, since you three are dying to know, I suppose there's no harm telling you. Creature said. Naruto narrow his eyes. My name is Cell, I'm a android, Cell said. Why you're a android? Hanada asked. I'm a single ultimate being of my creator, Dr. Jero, Cell said. As I shouldn't know, Piccolo said. You see, Dr. Jero planned to create a superior being by collect cells from the greatest fighters of the world and combine them together into one powerful being. Cell started. Flashback. Somewhere in the cave is a giant metal computer of some sort that had blinking lights flashing across its screen with a tube-shaped tank nearby with a tiny little bug-like thing inside. Human Dr. Jero stare at the creature he's working on before heading off. Cell. Unfortunately for the good doctor however, he soon realized that his project was taking too much time to compete during his lifetime. Dr. Jero turn off the lights and leaving. Cell. But only after he programmed his computer to finish the huge task which he had began. The computer screen suddenly turned on by himself and automatically went on working on the creature inside the tank. Cell. The computer worked tirelessly to compete the fusion of cells that been gathered from the mighty warriors that walk among the earth. Warriors such as. Nappa send his attack, Cell. Saiyan Nappa, on Gohan who just stand here, meeting his doom. Cell. The young but powerful Gohan. Piccolo suddenly stand in front of Gohan and took the hit for him. Cell. And of course yours, Piccolo. Vegeta as the great ape land his foot on Goku. Cell. Goku. Vegeta now is human, just cut off Gohan's tail and Gohan transform while fall on Vegeta, knocking them both out cold. Cell. Saiyan Prince Vegeta's as well. The cells from these warriors were formed into one. End of flashback. Cell smile at their faces, surprise and shock. Now I understand, you have Goku and others energy signal inside you by having their cells. Naruto said, pretending to not knowing. And you learn the Kamehameha wave when you have Goku cells. Piccolo said after putting two into together. That's correct, Cell said. Flashback. Future Trunks is about to slice Cyborg Frieza. Cell. Goku's cells were not last gather however, in the most fortune time, Fereza and his father pray a good visit to Earth. And though he seemed most machine at the time, 
it was still possible gather his few remaining cells before he was destroyed by Trunks. Trunks then destroy King Cold. Cell. Trunks cells would have collect but Dr. Jero's computer believe there's already enough Saiyan powers to my makeup. End of flashback. So tell me this, how did Dr. Jero get the cells? I don't recall seeing him or anyone suspicious around here. Piccolo said. There's a simple way. By now, you guys must have learned Dr. Jero's tracking device. Cell said. Naruto, Hanada and Piccolo's eyes went a bit wide. The tracking device is very small, insect-like. No different than a common housefly. There, do you two brats see it? It's watching us at the very moment, waiting for opportunity to gather more cells. Cell said, pointing at the very small bug-like bot flying nearby. Naruto and Hinata saw the bot and together, sending their energy wave at the bot, destroy it. Cell laugh at the show. Well teamwork, you two. But I'm afraid you are wasting your time. The computer already has it needs for my competes back in the lab. Cell said. You're wrong. Naruto destroy that lab and everything inside. Hanada said. Luckily, the computer is hid in the room beneath the laboratory. Cell said. I see. Naruto said. It's not too late, you know. One of the others will somehow PW find the computer and destroy it. Piccolo said. Don't be so sure. The computer will work undisturbed for the next 24 years. At which time, I shall be compete. Now then, it's time to put an end of this chit chat. You first, Android, Cell said, aiming his stinger at Hinata while his claws glow long near Piccolo's neck. The stinger is about to. Just one more question. Why you here? Why did you come to this time? Naruto asked, trying to save Hinata and Piccolo as hard as he try. My. You humans are full of questions. Well, I suppose I can answer to this last one. It's quite simple really. You see, I cannot reach to my full power by absorbing humans along. According to the computer, I'm looking for two special energies. Cell said. Naruto narrow his eyes, knowing what Cell's looking for. More to the point, I'm searching for Android 17 and 18. Cell said. What? Naruto, Hanada and Piccolo asked. You see. The powers of Goku, Vegeta, Frieza and all the others are already part of my being. But these were pale compared to the powers of the androids. It is these powers I must collect for myself. Unfortunately, in the time where I came from, Android 17 and 18 no longer existed. They were somehow be destroyed by Trunks and with them, my hope to my perfect form. Cell said. So, Trunks from Cell's time is alive and somehow able to destroy the androids. Naruto thought. Flashback. Trunks is about to climb on his time machine. Cell. Luckily however, I discovered that Trunks have the time capsule which I decide to borrow it for myself. Trunks sensed something behind him. Turn and saw a bug-like monster step out of the shadow. Trunks took out his sword and charge in but Cell was too fast, grabbed Trunks' neck with his tail and crushed Trunks' neck, killing him. Cell. I got rid of Trunks so easy but using the time machine is proving to be more challenging. Cell then glow and start to shrink. Cell. Like I said before, in order and fit inside the time capsule, I was forced to revert myself back to my larval form. Small enough, Cell climb in and press the button. The hatch close and the time machine disappear. Cell. With that done, I activate the time machine and it's now sent to the time and place. The time which I hope to find the Android 17 and 18 alive and well. In which I be able to reach my true power. The time machine appear somewhere in the mountains in about 4 years from where it came from. Larval shoot a beam at the hatch, making a big hole and climb out. Cell understandable, I cannot begin my search while I'm still in my larval form. I have to wait till I regain my fighting shape. So. I burrow deep underground where for the last four years, I be laying and waiting. Gather my strength, growing to the superior being you see before you today. End of flashback. But why did you choose this time of all? Piccolo asked. I didn't. The machine was set up by trunks. I simply pushed the button and the machine went where it programmed to go. Cell said. Now, it's starting to make sense. Trunks set the time machine in order to tell us he had destroyed the androids in the future but instead, this creep stole the machine. Piccolo thought. Oh, and the computer told me one other thing. 
Cell said. Naruto and Hinata look at the evil creature. Once I have absorbed those androids, I'll be the most powerful being who's ever live. Cell said. What for? You're already the strongest in your time. Naruto said. That is true but I design was to absorb androids 17 and 18. Without them, I can never be compete. I have to seek them out. It's what I created to do. Cell said. Cell then smile. Of course it could also be the blood of Vegeta and Frieza causing through my vein to seek out more power. Cell said. But, how are you going to absorb those androids? They're just machine, Hanada said. Foolish girl, like you, Android 17 and 18 are cyborg, half human and half machine. Cell said. Then how you going to absorb those half humans androids? You can completely drain them dry, Hanada said. That's also true, which is why I can do this, Cell said with the smile. With that, the tip of Cell's tail suddenly opened like a blooming flower, becoming a wide funnel with a dark, forbidding hole in its center. It's hover over Hanada. Clever trick, Hanada said, and I decide to practice on you. Cell said with an evil smile. Wait, you were going to stab her not long ago, Naruto said. I wasn't really, even I know I can't completely absorb her. I was planning to drain what's left of her human living energy and destroy the rest but I changed my mind. Cell said. Oh joy, Hanada muttered. Now, there'll be no more questions. Cell said. Yes, I'm agree, Piccolo said with a smile. Cell looked at his prisoner in confuse. You said more than enough, Piccolo said. Piccolo suddenly power up his aura wave around him, pushing Cell off in few feet away. Piccolo's energy is now up to full power, Hanada said. All right, Naruto said. Cell got back Yu Pan turned to Piccolo as Naruto and Hinata join with Piccolo. Piccolo suddenly rip his withered off and then grow a new arm. Cell widen his eyes in shock. I just need a little time, that's all. Piccolo said, trying out his new arm. And some answers which you kindly give them to us. Hinata said as her boyfriend stick out his tongue at his evil brother. I don't think I get tired of this twin brother's thing. Do you? You three trick me. I should have known you were up to something. Cell said. We won't allow you to be compete. Naruto said with the smile. You going down, Cell. We're planning to put the end of your evil ways, once and for all. Piccolo said. Cell after snap out of his shock, close his stinger and went on his fighting stance. Piccolo and others are prepared to fight Dr. Jero's ultimate creation, Cell. Very clever, Piccolo. Detracted me to grow new arm. I must have gained cleverness from you, Cell said. Don't bother. The idea is Kami's, Piccolo said. Kami, so, that's how you got new powers, Cell said, managed to put two to two together. Very good, guess you not as dumb as I thought, Piccolo said. But Kami is the guardian, which means there are no dragon balls to revive everyone I absorbed. How wonderful, for me, Cell said. Okay, Kamikolo. We need to stop Cell from absorbing Android 17 and 18. Naruto said, oh come on. Even you know Naruto's nicknames. And even I couldn't resist that funny nickname. One, I'm aware of that. And two, don't call me that. Piccolo said. Cell finds that nickname funny as he laugh. You know, you're funny boy. Cell said. You won't be laughing when Goku get better and kick your bug butt. Naruto said. Naruto. Piccolo and Hinata said, quote dot dot dot, ops, Naruto said. So, Goku is still alive. I'll deal with him later after I handle these three. Cell thought. I'm not sure how Goku is alive. But if you excuse me, I got a date with the other androids and it would be rude of me to keep them waiting. But here your parting gift. Cell said as he jumped in front of the sun. Cell then placing his hands close to the center of his face with the fingers spread toward his eyes. Oh no, Naruto said, solar flare, Cell chanted. With that, Cell provokes a white light to fire out and blind the heroes long enough to make his escape. I can't see, Piccolo said, Cell's gone, Naruto said. After their sight are normal, they look around. That was Tien's move, Piccolo said. According to the files Dr. Jero add in me, that's the move you could use to get away. The only I know that can use it is Tien and Krillin. Hanada said, lied. That core word, Naruto said before fly high to the sky. 
Piccolo and Hinata follow and together, all three of them look around, but no sign of Cell anyway nearby. Cell seems to hide his energy signal. I can't sense or track him, Hinata said. Meanwhile, Cell is running at high speed. These fools were no match for my cleverness and as long I hide my energy, they won't be able to find before it too late. Cell said. After long run, Cell stop at the road. These new people, Naruto is it, and his android friend, whoever she is, are strange. I can't believe they helped that Namekian exhausted some of my energy. Pity, Cell said. Cell then moving over the road to the next sign. If I don't absorb the androids soon, these two along with the Z warriors would cause some trouble. Cell said. Cell then look at the sign. Nikki Town is it. Sound like a good place to feed. Cell said. Just then, the buses arrive behind Cell. The driver saw Cell and hit the brake hard. The bus has battle ball on it. Which means that the driver must be the manager. Anyway. Hey. Get off the road. Manager said. I just hope the androids can survive long enough for me to reach them. Cell thought. Last chance, you moron. Move, manager said. After all, if Piccolo and those two friends of his can slow me down, who knows what they can do to the lower model droids. Cell thought. Manager honking the horn. I guess I should just spend less time playing with my food. Cell thought. Had enough, the team got off the bus and made their way to Cell. What's up, freak show? Why ya holding us up from our game, bucko? Team captain said. Maybe he's a mascot that lost his team. Player 6 said before he laugh along with the team. Yeah, go team grasshoppers. Player 3 mocked. Weirdo, get off the road or we move you. Captain said. Quote dot dot dot. Well, let the fun begin, then. Cell said. With that, Cell speed past player 8 and 5, knocking them out. Then Cell began to charge. Blocking formation, Captain ordered. With that, the team minus two members, now form a human wall. Cell charge hard. Surprising, the team can hold Cell pretty well. What the? Player 2 asked when he saw something. Cell turn and saw something golden, flying to Ginger Town. Cell feel the energy from it and knows who energy is. Vegeta, I thought the androids took care of him. Perhaps they're more dangerous than I thought. Cell thought. Cell then stab his stinger on the back of the team captain and starting to draining. Better hurry this along, Cell thought. Meanwhile, Super Saiyan Vegeta is heading to Ginger Town, following two energy signals. That's strange. One of the two energies I following seems to disappeared. But I can still sense other one. I must find out who it is, Vegeta said. Meanwhile, Trunks and Krillin arrive a while ago only to see Piccolo pretty mad. How can I let Cell escape? Piccolo asked as he power up by his anger. He's sure as mad, Krillin said. I'll find you Cell. Do you hear me? I'll find you, Piccolo yelled. Vegeta arrive at the time Piccolo power up. What the? What power? Vegeta asked. Piccolo calm down and sense Vegeta coming by. Vegeta after he power down, land in front of the others. What happened? Vegeta asked. We'll explain what happened but we need to wait for Tien. He'll be arriving shorty, Hanada said. Fine, but Piccolo must tell me how you got that much power. Vegeta said. Piccolo just stand there, not bothering to answer Saiyan Prince. Well, answer me, Vegeta said. If you must know, Piccolo merged with Kami and become Super Namekian. Naruto said. S Super Namekian, Vegeta asked in shock. Naruto then sensed Tien arriving. Kamikolo, Tien's here, Naruto said, stop calling me that, just call me Piccolo, now listen up, Piccolo said. Meanwhile, Cell speed through the road, heading to Nikki Town with new powers he got from the Battle Ball team and their manager. Just a few picking in Nikki Town and then it's off to find the androids. Cell said. Meanwhile, speaking of the devil I mean robots, android stolen van drive over the bridge. 16 look through the window of 18's side, and stare at the beautiful view. 17, you know I hate this outfit. I look like a cowgirl, which she is lol. Could it be possible to head to the best town to find best clothes? 18 asked. I suppose. 17 said. Meanwhile, Piccolo finished explain what's going. What, you saying this cell has Kakarot's cells in mine? Vegeta asked. We got two choices. 
1. Find the androids and somehow destroy them or 2. Go after Cell before he finds the androids. If he absorbs them, he'll be unstoppable, Piccolo said. Everyone minus Naruto and Hinata are so shocked of what they've heard. How can this be happening? Every time I get stronger, someone come out of nowhere with even more power. Vegeta thought. Our best bet is to go after Cell. He should be easy to find. Piccolo said. Kamikolo is right. We can't tack down the androids because they don't have energy signal but Cell is a different story. Naruto said. Would you stop calling me that? My name is Piccolo. Just Piccolo. Piccolo said. So what? I say let this so call Cell absorb the androids. That's save me the trouble. Vegeta said. Don't underestimate Cell. Once he absorbs the androids, he'll be the most powerful creature of all world. Hanada said. I won't listen to a piece of junk like you, android. I have become the Super Saiyan, but I won't stop there. I'll go beyond the Super Saiyan, Vegeta said. With that, Vegeta fly off in high speed. Sometimes he really gets on my nerves, Piccolo said. Mine as well, Naruto said. Go beyond the Super Saiyan. Is that possible? Hanada asked. Hey, Trunks, explain this to me again. Tell me what will happen if we went back in time and destroy the androids before they woke up. Krillin asked. Well, it might help the future of that world but it wouldn't change anything that's already happened here. Trunks said. So even if I did destroy the androids around here, it won't change the future I came from. Naruto thought. So, if that how time travel stuffs works, then it wouldn't do us any good if we destroy the unfinished cell back in Dr. Jero's lab, right? It would not affect Cell from the future. Right, not the Cell from my world. But at the very least we should destroy this world Cell so he won't be able to be born in this world future. Trunks said. All right, you two go to Dr. Jero's lab if you think it would help. I'll stay here and track down Cell. Piccolo said. Right, I'll give you a hand. Tien said. Hanada and I will tag along. Naruto said. You know for some reason you can't find Cell you should head to Master Roshi's house. I mean if nothing else, you might be able to find him on the TV news. Krillin said. Yeah, good idea, Tien said. That's it, Krillin said. With that, Krillin and Trunks blow with aura wave and took off. Hanada, if you can't track Cell, then could you find next town? Naruto asked. I'm not a map but I will try, Hanada said. Hanada close her eyes for the while. Quote dot dot dot, got it, they're a town called Nikki Town about 80 milas away, Hanada said. Then that's got to be where Cell is going, Naruto said. All right, let's go, Piccolo said. With that, they glow with aura wave and took off to Nikki Town. Meanwhile, but it's too late, Cell is already near Nikki Town, licking his lips if he had one. Look at these tasty people, it's a shame they won't be here much longer. Wait for me Android 17 and 18, I'll be ready for you soon enough. Cell said before he began to hurt. It's been three days since Kamek I mean Piccolo and his helpers meet Cell. They track him down but Cell is too fast and already draining people from city to city and town to town. Each time Z fighters arrive, the only things they find are clothes left behind after Cell stuck them dry. No matter how they tried, Cell will sense them and took off, hiding. So we are now start at Roshi's house. Piccolo, Krillin, Gohan, Tien, Yamcha, Naruto and Hinata are watching the news saying about the monster attack. Chi Chi then head to Naruto and Hinata. You two must be the heroes who save my Goku. I'm Chi Chi, Chi Chi said. Nice to meet you, I'm Naruto and this is my girlfriend, Hinata. Naruto said. Roshi stares at Hinata or should I say, Hinata's, breasts. Hanada notices it and with faster than a bullet, punch Roshi hard to the wall. What? A punch, Roshi said. What was Roshi doing to get a punch? Naruto asked. I bet Roshi is staring at Hanada's chest. He always do that to any pretty girls. Chi Chi said in anger. Oh, so, he's like pervy sage. Naruto said, with Roshi remind Naruto of his pervert teacher. Pervy sage, Gohan asked. Quote dot dot dot. My grandfather before he died, Naruto said. Oh, he stares at Leda's chest too. Chi Chi asked. Nope, 
He peek on girls in the hot springs and write books for perverts. Naruto said. That's even worse, Chi Chi said. Can we not worry about about old men peeking on girls? We need to stop cell. Piccolo said. Quote dot dot dot. I got it, Yamcha said. A while later, Piccolo, Krillin, Gohan, Tien, Yamcha, Naruto and Hinata are in Yamcha's plane. If we just fly with the plane, Cell won't be able to sense us and then we can take him by surprise. Yamcha said. Sounds like a plan to me. Krillin said. Together, we'll take him down hard. Tien said. Cell is a lot smarter than you are. There's a good chance he might be expect us to try something like this. Don't underestimate him, Piccolo said. Kamikolo is right, Naruto said. Didn't I say not to call me that? Piccolo asked in anger. Krillin, Yamcha, Tien and Gohan couldn't help laughing at that nickname. Well, we sure need Goku, Krillin said. As if someone heard that, Goku suddenly appear out of nowhere, surprising everyone but Krillin. That'll be really nice, Krillin said. W what was that trick? Naruto asked. Sure would be great if he show up, Krillin said, still not knowing Goku is behind him. It's daddy, Gohan said in cheerful, that what finally got Krillin to turn around and saw Goku in the fresh. Hi there, Goku said, Krillin turn away, e up, just like that, he could appear any. Krillin sudden stop and turn to look at Goku again. Hey there, Krillin, Goku said, Goku, Krillin said, Krillin charge at Goku and together. Both he and Goku bust through the back of the plane, making a really big hole. Goku, you came back, Krillin said. Just then, Krillin and Goku notices something. Uh oh, there's Go our ride, Krillin said, watching the plane leaving them. Hey, Yamcha, swing around and grab those two, Naruto said. After Goku and Krillin been pick up, Gook went to Naruto and Hinata. You two must be Naruko and Hanto, Goku said. Naruto and Hinata drop down while everyone even Piccolo, having some payback, laugh about it. Wrong name for wrong person. I'm Hinata, Hinata. And this is Naru to Naruto. Hinata said. Oh, sorry. Anyway, thanks for saving my life against Android 19. Goku said. No pro. Naruto said. Goku then head to Kamikolo. Goku said, causing Piccolo to fall forward. Listen. Just call me Piccolo, it's bad enough that pesky boy, Naruto keeps calling me that. Piccolo said. Oh, okay then, Goku said. Well, what is it? Piccolo asked, knowing Goku want to say something. Goku went down to business. Piccolo, there's no way we can defeat the power of Cell in the fight right now. That's why I DIC to start training again. And I know the place where I get a year of training in the day. Goku said. Where is that? Naruto asked. It's at Kami's place, Goku said. So it's back to the hyperbolic time chamber. I see. No one is able to stay there for the year. No one. It might be way more than you can handle Goku. Piccolo said. Yeah, that's why I'm taking Trunks, Vegeta, Naruto and Hinata with me. Surely one of the us will be able to do it. Goku said. Us, Naruto and Hinata asked. Then go, quickly. Cell is gets stronger every day. And time is in short supply. If we let him absorb Android 17, we're finished for sure. Piccolo said. True. Come on, Gohan, Naruto and Hinata. Goku said, hold out his hand. Gohan, take my hand. Goku said. Gohan nodded and take Goku's hand. Goku place his index and middle fingers on his forehead and a while later, Goku and his company suddenly disappear. Wow. I got to learn that, Naruto said. Meanwhile, inside Goku's house, dresses are all over the floor as someone or something taking them one by one from the wardrobe. It's Android 18 in her new clothes, a black vest, a white undershirt, blue jeans with a golden chain, black gloves with a gold bracelet on the left one, and black flats with orange socks, trying out Chi Chi clothes while looking for Goku. Just look at this place. What a dump. I can't believe Goku actually lives here, 18 said. Android 18 step out of Goku house to meet 16 and 17 waiting outside. He's gone, 17 said. Great, 18 said. 16, can you track Goku? 17 asked. I can try, 
Goku seems to moving so much, I cannot locate him. 16 said. Okay, tell us where he was last location. 17 said. Alright, Goku was last seen on the small island to the south. 16 said. Then that's where we are going. 17 said. 16 and 18 nodded and set off. Meanwhile, Goku, Gohan, Vegeta and Trunks arrive at Kami's place and Goku tell Mr. Popo the black genie, wearing turban wearing and former servant of Kami. Please, follow me, Mr. Popo said, leading Goku and company, you'll find everything you need here. There's food, a bed and bath. What do you think this is, a holiday? This is work, Vegeta said. Ignore him Mr. Popo, he's a little uptight today. He's just eager to compete his training, Goku said. Yes, so I can take care of you, Kakarot. Vegeta muttered then smile. Mr. Popo then stopped near the single door. Here it is, which group go in first? Mr. Popo asked. Trunks, Vegeta, go on in. Goku said. Good, Mr. Popo said before he reached for the door handle. Once you cross the door, you are to spending a year in a room, but when you leave only a day pass in this world. Mr. Popo opened the door, showing nearly white room. Good luck. Trunks heading to the room, followed by Vegeta. Thank you Goku, Trunks said. Good luck, Trunks. Take care of Vegeta, okay? Goku asked. Vegeta glare at Goku then completely enter the room before Mr. Popo closed the door, cutting Vegeta and Trunks off from outside. Meanwhile, the Z fighters have returned to Roshi's house and spend the night there. The following morning while everyone is asleep, Naruto, Hanada and Piccolo are watching TV, listening the news which is about Cell. Curse you, Cell, Piccolo said. Hanada decided to stand near the window when she saw what made her shivering in fear. And Naruto, Piccolo, you might want to come and look outside. Hanada said. In confuse, Naruto and Piccolo join Hanada and saw what she's meant. Standing outside is the evil androids. Hi. Can Goku come out and play? 17 asked. Oh great. Just what we need, Android Pizza Delivery Group. Naruto thought. Piccolo, wait inside, Hanada and I will handle this. Naruto said. With that, Naruto and Hanada went outside. And so you can lead them to Goku. I don't think so, Piccolo thought, still not trusting Naruto and Hanada, before went to wake up the others. Meanwhile, Naruto and Hanada glare at their opponents. Goku's not here but maybe we can take his place. Naruto said. No thanks, but if you two tell us where he is, you might live longer. 17 said. Just then, Krillin, Tien and Yamcha join in, followed by Piccolo. Goku's not here, so, why don't you get loose? Piccolo asked. Now, now, it's not very nice to talk to your guests like that. 17 said, amusement. Uh oh. They look like trouble with a big, T. Roshi said from the bedroom window with Chi Chi. You know, you're right. Naruto said, I am, he is. Everyone but 16 asked in surprise and confuse. We should really treat you guys as our guests. Naruto said. Yes, he's right, we should. Hanada said, seeing what her boyfriend up to. With that, Naruto and Hanada head to the window where two pies are sitting and pick them up. Have some pies. Naruto said with his usually evil smile, if you watch Naruto, you should know what Naruto always do in his free time. We don't have time for this nonsense. We need to find Go. 17 suddenly cut off by the pie land on his face. 18 laughed so much at her brother new looks before a pie land on her face as well. 16 couldn't help but laugh, followed by everyone even Piccolo laugh. Slowly, 17 and 18 removed the pie tins before in rage, crush them. You're just asking for this. 17 said. Oh boy. Krillin asked, in fear. Piccolo was about to say thing. Have it your way. There's an empty island about five miles from here. You two and us too. Hanada said. Fine. You going to pay for the pie trick. You just ruined my hair. No one ruining my hair and lives. 18 said. You four, stay here. This is our fight. Naruto said before he and Hanada fly off. Followed by the androids. Why the others have to stay behind? Hanada asked in quiet voice so the androids couldn't hear them. Because out of four, Kamikolo is the strongest. 
may be stronger as Android 17 and that means if Cell sends him with no one, he'll figure that Kamikolo is fighting 17 and be on his way to absorb him and if Cell sends me, I don't believe Cell will think I fighting the androids well as to him, I'm a human with ki. Naruto whispered. Back with Piccolo, you three stay here, I'm going after them as I don't trust them. Piccolo said before he with lowest energy level he can, fly after good and bad androids. A while later, Naruto, Hanada and the androids land on the island. Sixteen move away before he notices Piccolo catching up and land on tall cliff, watching the battle as well as prepare to make his own without Naruto and Hanada see him. Last chance, tell us where Goku is. Seventeen said. Naruto and Hanada went to their fighting stance, saying. Go find him yourself you pair of lazy bots. Very well, let's see what you two have got. Seventeen said, pull up his sleeves before he and his sister went to their own fighting stance. Naruto then glare sixteen watching the birds. Battle with the androids won't be easy as we cannot watch sixteen. I got to make sure he doesn't attack whlier back his turn. Naruto thought. Keep the big one out of this. Naruto said, relax. 16 only wants to fight Goku. No one else. 18 said. Good. If 16 won't interfere then we might have a chance. If we could beat one or better yet, two of them, then Cell will have nothing to absorb and won't become complete. Hanada thought. They will have a chance against you too. 16 said. What make you say that? 18 said. According to my calculations, they're just as strong as you too. 16 said. What? How is that possible? 17 asked. I can answer that in one big work, training. Naruto said. With that, the battle is about to start. The wind blow gently with 17, 18 and Hanada's long hair waving. Ding ding. Everyone suddenly turned and saw Earth Beast with the boxing bell. Earth Beast. Um, sorry. I thought I could make this amusing. As you were, moving after from the screen. That was odd. 18 just said with everyone nodded. Suddenly, Naruto and Hinata charge at high speed and start punching on the evil android's face as the androids move back. One last punch however, was grab an evil androids kick them, flipping to the cliff wall. Naruto and Hinata charge again and together with the evil androids, fighting in high speed so fast that normal eyes couldn't see them. They floating high as they punching, kicking, dodging and blocking. 17 try to land a punch be Naruto disappear. Where did he go? Seventeen asked while look around. Suddenly, Naruto is coming in fast. Naruto knocks Seventeen to the ground but Seventeen managed to flip land as Naruto land 100 yards away from Seventeen. Hanada and Eighteen coming down as Hanada punches and kicks while Eighteen dodges and blocks. When they near the ground, Hanada and Eighteen split apart and land near their partner. The fighters stare at each other. What power? Could those two really had a chance against them? Piccolo thought. Naruto then began to power up his energy with glowing aura wave around him before charging a 17 charge as well. Both land their forehead on each other and both went on death lock. Hanada jumped high and about to land a sky kick but 18 managed to jump away but in react, Hanada disappear and reappear behind 18, grab her leg and spin her around few times before letting her go, causing android 18 to her brother. Two androids land few yards away as Hanada joined Naruto. T they beating us, 18 said in shock, H how could those two who couldn't beat us last time, beating us now? 17 asked in shock as well. Slowly, the evil androids getting back up but Naruto point his palm at them. Naruto power up his energy attack then fire at the androids, causing a huge explosion over the island. Android 17 and 18 manage to dodge that powerful attack and float near smoke. When the smoke settle, in front of Naruto and Hanada, is a big trench. Those are a lot more powerful than last time. 17 said with his sister nodded in agreement. What's a matter? Need to recharge your batteries. Naruto said with his girlfriend laugh at Naruto's joke. No, we are not giving up that easy. 18 said. Good, because we just getting started. Good androids thought. Meanwhile, Dr. Brief just rock his grandson to sleep while Bulma is working on the data about Android 17 and add them to the remote controller. I think he's asleep, Dr. Brief whispered. Great, thanks for looking after Trunks while I work on this, Dad. Bulma said, with a messy hair. 
So, any luck of the plan to Android 17? Dr. Brief asked. Yeah, but man, it's a lot of work. They're like thousands of them to look at. Bulma said. Don't give up. Dr. Brief said, I'm come to way to give up now. If I can add all the data of Android 17 to this controller I made, I can shut down him. Bulma said. Suddenly, the computer went haywire. What the? Why did Dr. Jero have to make these androids so hard to figure out? Bulma asked in rage. Bulma's sudden yell woke Trunks up and now Trunks crying. Dr. Brief put Trunks and tried to calm him down. I wish, I could cry. Bulma said in sadness. Meanwhile, Naruto and Hinata stare at Android 17 and Android 18. Suddenly in high speed, the good androids and the bad androids charge at each other and 17 and 18 throw punches and kicks while Naruto and Hinata blocking those attack. Suddenly, Naruto and Hinata disappear but so did the androids before Naruto and Hinata land a blow. Android 17 and 18 float ahead. Naruto and Hinata launch their energy attacks but 17 and 18 dodge them so easy. Skillful dodge, I'll give you that, Naruto said. You not so bad, yourself. I never had this much fun before, 17 said with a smile. Well, fun or no fun, we really need to find Goku, 18 said. Then, let's get on with the match, Hinata said. With that, Naruto and Hinata charge to the evil androids. Charging again, don't you two get tried of doing that? 18 asked. Suddenly, Naruto and Hinata flies around Android 17 and 18 so fast. What are those two doing? Piccolo asked. What are they doing? Running around hoping to make us dizzy? 17 asked. Then Hinata suddenly stopped few feet away from the androids. Finish running. 17 asked. Prepare to battle. Um, 17. 18 asked as she point behind her and her brother. 17 turned and saw Naruto behind them. 17 looked to his right, left, high and low, group of Naruto's surrounded the androids. That what he's up to? 18 said. It was a trick all along. 17 said. Ha, you never expect a cloning trick, did you? Real Naruto 1 asked. With that, Naruto 1 cupping his hands at his side, Naruto 2 touch his index and middle fingers to his forehead. Naruto 3 form the circle hand sign near his chest, Naruto 4 curls his fingers and places both his hands together at chest level facing the same direction, so that the palm of one hand is on the back of the other, Naruto 5 forming a vaguely diamond shape, window, with the hand by keeping the fingers on each hand together, overlapping the index finger on the one hand with the pinky of the other hand, and overlapping the thumbs and Hinata points her palms out. It's over for you, Naruto 4 said, with that, Naruto's and Hinata power up and one by one, they fire their attack. Ha, Naruto 1 said, special beam cannon, Naruto 2 said, ha beam cannon, Naruto 3 said, Gaelic gun, Naruto 4 said, tri beam, Naruto 5 said, final hell flash, Hinata said. The attacks hit their targets, creating a very large explosion, destroying the island they were using. Meanwhile, wow, what power. Naruto must be winning, Yamcha said. Not so fast, Naruto might be strong but we don't know how strong the androids were. Roshi said. Let's just hope Naruto and Hinata handle them well, Krillin said. Meanwhile, with the island gone, Piccolo and Android 16 float over the sea as Naruto and Hinata stare at the smoke. What power, they managed to destroy the androids, Piccolo thought. Suddenly, Naruto and Hinata along with Piccolo shock at what they couldn't believe. Floating in the smoke as the smoke settle, Android 17 and 18 are in the glowing ball completely unharmed. A barrier, Hinata asked. Give up, 17 said. You cannot beat us, 18 said. It's not over till it's over, Naruto said. See that island, meet us there so we can finish this nonsense game. Unless you two are too chicken, 18 said. With that, Android 17 and 18 disappear, follow by Naruto and Hinata then follow by Android 16 and Piccolo. Meanwhile, Cell hold a little boy and aim his tail at him as the boy try to get free. It's your lucky day, boy. Your useless life will be spared. I had much more important to do right now. Cell said as he sensed something. Naruto's energy signal seems to be higher. Is he and that android girlfriend of his still looking for me? No. They're too far away. 
and Piccolo, Cell thought. Suddenly, Cell dropped the boy. Piccolo must be fighting Android 17. That has to be it, Cell said. With that, Cell jumped to the high building. Complete at least. This isn't hard as I thought, Cell said. With that, Cell fly high, heading straight to the battle to get the androids. Well, the answer for that question is this. Naruto is worried that the Z fighters would jump to the wrong conclusion about him and he'd have a fight on two fronts. Besides, what do you guys prefer? A story where Naruto curb stomps everyone or a story where he actually tries? Anyway, on with the story. Chapter 14 Androids vs Androids Part 2 Naruto, Hanada and the androids arrive on the volcano island with Piccolo still hiding. The good and the evil androids stare each other. It's a shame that you keep on battling. Our mission has nothing to do with you two. It's Goku we're after. Destroying you is not what we wish to do. It doesn't make sense for you two to die out in the middle of nowhere when we have no interest in killing you. 17 said. Why don't one of you just tell us where Goku is and then leave unharm? 18 said. Or we just kick your butt harder? Naruto said. Fine, we'll make you tell us where he is. How does that sound? 17 asked as he and his sister went to their own fighting stance. Naruto and Hinata answer by went to their fighting stance. Bad move, but at least you're not boring. 17 said. For once, I agree. I always want to fight a very strong woman nearly my level, 18 said. Naruto and 17 then float to each other. When they near each other, they land and stare at each other. Naruto then slowly power up with glowing aura wave around him. A while later, 17 suddenly make his first attack by punch Naruto on the face. Naruto tried to punch back but android 17 duck and punch Naruto on the stomach knocking the air out of Naruto then got behind Naruto and elbow him to the ground. As Naruto got back up, 17 tried to jump kick but Naruto back flip back to Hinata as 18 joined her brother. Naruto massage his neck then spit out some blood. Your speed is good, but your punches are lacking. A good friend of mine and my grandma punch a lot harder than that. Naruto said. What? That's not possible. 17 said in shock before he smile, I see. You just buffing ain't you. Well, I'm not buying it. No one can match me in power. Well, we'll see about that. Naruto said. With that, Naruto power up again. Android 17 charges Naruto did. 17 try to land a kick but Naruto jump over 17, land behind him and power up to make a powerful kick, leaving a beam line before Naruto charge through. 17 stop in midair but Naruto appear and punch him on the face. 17 grab the ground. You can't keep this up. You'll tied out. 17 said. You're not prefect. You'll make a mistake before that happen. Naruto said. You're just a flesh and bone creature. 17 said. We might as well carry on with our battle. Hanada said. Very well. 18 said. Two female androids stare each other like a cowboy I mean cowgirl. Draw. 18 said. Fire her energy beam at Hanada. Hanada just stand there as the beam come closer than duck, power up her own energy beam and fire it. The beam hit android 18 on the face only leaving a few scratches but that wasn't the problem, her hair is. My hair. 18 yelled as her hairs now look like an afro hairstyle. No offense to those who have afro hairstyle. Naruto and 17 look at 18 and laugh at it along with 16 and try not to out loud. Piccolo. 18 frown as she place her hand inside a vest and pull out a hairbrush and brush her hair back to normal. That's second time you ruining my hair. I'm not going to let you do that again. 18 said in rage. Meanwhile, Goku and Gohan are waiting near the door as they sense the battle. Father, do you think Naruto and Piccolo can handle the androids? Gohan asked. I'm not sure son, but if they can just hold of a little longer, we might have a chance. Goku said. Meanwhile, 17 charge and punch Naruto to the ground hard, creating cracking ground and dust. Suddenly, Naruto appear over 17 and knock him to the ground a lot harder. Hanada kick 18 in the air. 18 stop, charge and headbutt on Hanada to the mountain cliff. Bad news right now is that the more these androids battle, the more they destroying the island. Naruto and 17 deathlock and power up the forces which it making volcano blow up and island crumbing. With the way they battle, 
there won't be any islands left. Hanada and 18 now float over the ocean, punching, kicking, dodging and blocking. Meanwhile, Krillin, Yamcha, Tian and Roshi are now seeing smoke at Far Island. Oh man, I'm going crazy, Tian said. Krillin then sends something to his left and starting to shiver. It's horrible, you guys, Krillin said. I know, Tian said, not knowing what Krillin is talking about. Yamcha and Roshi notices about Krillin. It's something wrong, Krillin. Yamcha asked. Yeah, more bad news. It's Cell, Krillin said. What, Cell? Tian asked. Slowly, others starting to sense Cell as well. Meanwhile, Cell is moving faster, with only one set in mind, Asborbing Android 17 and 18. What a grand day, the day of my complete from. Just a thought of it makes me tingle, Cell said. Cell then laugh about it as he went faster and faster. Meanwhile, Baby Trunks cries for like hours I think, while his grandfather try to calm him down. Now, now, there, there, your mother is working, Trunks. Look at Grandpa, boy. Dr. Brief said before makes silly faces. And it's not working. That's funny. That move always works. Mayday Bulma, Dr. Brief said. Bulma is still working about Android 17's data. Just a second, Dad. I'm almost there, Bulma said before she drink her coffee. I don't think I can take this much longer, sweetheart. I'm exhausted, Dr. Brief said. Hey, come on, I haven't sleep for 48 hours. What do you think about that, ah? Uh, Bulma asked. Well, but, right, Dr. Brief said. Nice dad, Bulma said. Well, I'll tell you what I have to say about that. Take care of your kid. He's diving us all nuts. 48 hours of torture. Yahirobi said as he walked in with arm full of buns before turn to baby, look, no offense little boy. I don't blame you, all would do the same thing you do. Suddenly, Bulma got up. Ta-da, all finish guys, it's so rare to find beauty and genius all pack into one little package. Bulma said as she made her way to her father. That's great, hun, just take him, Dr. Brief said. Bulma take trunks and the baby finally stopped crying. Great work, sweetheart, you did it, Dr. Brief said. Thanks dad, if it's works, I should be able to stop the androids with the push of he button. Bulma said. Awesome, Yahirobi said. That's my girl, wait, what about your friend? Hin, Hin, Dr. Brief tried to remember Bukma's android friend's name. Hanada, Bulma asked. That's the one. She's an android too according to her and her boyfriend's story. Wouldn't that remote shut her down too? Dr. Brief asked. He's got a really good point. Yahirobi said, relax. Dr. Jero built this remote to shut down only Android 17 and Android 18 so Hanada will be safe. Bulma said, hold out, V, for victory. Meanwhile, Naruto fly up, follow by 17. Naruto then change at 17 and punch him down. Going down, Naruto said, sending his energy wave at 17. Android 17 move away, letting the attack pass him only to head right into a trap as Naruto reappear in front of him and swing his arms on 17, knocking down. Hanada and 18 charge at each other and fight fist to fist for the while till Hanada hold up her hand to stop the fight before Hanada point up. Android 18 look up and saw her brother coming down to her. Hanada step or should I say. Float away as 18 tried to move out of the way but too late, 17 knock 18 and both of them went in the sea. Androids land on the seabeds as Naruto and Hinata enter the ocean. That it, no more miss nice girl, 18 thought, with that, she power up her energy as bubbles bubbly around like a boil water. Outside the sea, Android 16 and Piccolo saw something boiling. Back in the sea, Android 18 continued to power up. Suddenly, Evil female android let out a big yell as the giant bubble appear and heading to Naruto and Hanada. Hanada send her energy wave at the bubble. Outside of the sea, kaboom, water explode and sending waves around. Suddenly something's pop out. Naruto and Hanada back to back with each other as they blocking every attack of androids as they fly to the next island. Piccolo and Android 16 just stare at them before they follow them. Meanwhile, Naruto's on the move again, isn't he? Yamcha asked. Yeah, definitely, Tian said. It feel like Cell is hot on their tail. 
Krillin said. You know it, that evil monster is not wasting any time. He want to absorb these two androids. And the thing is, Piccolo is with them and leading Cell right to them. Roshi said. So that's why Naruto wants us to stay here. He was hoping Cell wouldn't figure out that Naruto is fighting against the androids and Piccolo sadly didn't trust them and follow them unknowingly bringing Cell right to the battle. Yamcha said. Danim. Tian said. Just then, Chi Chi step out with the phone. Telephone guys. It's Bulma. Chi Chi said. Don't accept. Yamcha said. Oh, come on guys. Bulma figure out a way to shut down the androids. Chi Chi said. What? Accept the charges. Everyone said. Krillin take the phone. I heard all that. I guess I still let you use the remote I built that's shut down the androids but only if Mr. Loudmouth. Don't accept charges Yamcha agree to give yours truly a foot massage. Bulma said through the phone. I don't know Bulma. Krillin said through the phone. Well, that's the deal. So you can just take it or leave it. Bulma said through the phone. She's knows I can't stand rubbing on her feet. Yamcha said. Quote dot dot dot. You got a deal, but we are running out of time, Bulma. Naruto and Hinata are already fighting against the androids and Cell is on his way to the battlefield. Krillin said through the phone. Right, I'm on my way, Bulma said through the phone. That's great, if we can destroy the androids, then there's no way that Cell could reach his prefect form. Tian said. Leave it to Bulma to figure out how to get rid of most powerful fighters in the world with the push of the button. Yamcha said. Krillin was in lost thought. The memory of Android 18 in Krillin on the cheek. What's wrong? Tian asked when he noticed Krillin in deep thought. Krillin snap out. Wrong. Nothing wrong. Why? Krillin asked with his face a bit of red. Meanwhile, Cell speed up to the battlefield. Meanwhile, Daddy, it's Cell, ISN, it. He's heading to Naruto and Piccolo, isn't he? Gohan asked. Yes, son, I'm afraid so. And son, I know how you feel. I much weather be me down there with Naruto and Piccolo. Goku said. Goku then look at the door. Come on, Vegeta, please, hurry. Out of all the battles I've been, this is the hardest thing I ever done by far. Goku said. Meanwhile, Naruto, Hanada and the androids land on the near island and starting to battle again. Naruto charge at 17 and throwing punching and kicking while 17 dodging and blocking. Then suddenly, 17 grab Naruto's arm and toss him to the ground hard. Hanada blocked the kick of 18 and tried to punch her but her attack block. Suddenly, 18 slide her low kick to Hanada, tripping her, saddle on her and punches on her face for the while till Hanada wrap her legs around 18 and throw her off. Android 16 land near the battlefield while Piccolo land on the hill cliff, still hiding and waiting. Naruto fire his energy wave. 17 block it but suddenly, Naruto appear behind him and then punch 17 to the ground. 17 got back up and charge a Naruto and they punching, kicking, dodging and blocking. 18 yell as she power up. Suddenly in super super duper high speed, 18 charge and punch Hinata on the stomach. After recover, Hinata return the favor by punch 18 on her stomach. 18 punch Hinata's, Hinata punch 18's, 18 punch Hinata lot of stomach punches, isn't Hanada kick 18 on the face and 18 kick back, both flipping around. Naruto and 17 fly high. 17 kick Naruto. Naruto send out his powerful energy beam at 17. 17 falling but stop in midair with 18 joining him as Naruto join Hanada on the ground. Not bad for the pair of machines. Especially couple of earlier prototype like you two. Naruto said. You don't know what you talking about. We are the ultimate androids. There are no improvement to be made. 17 said as he and his sister land 10 feet away from Naruto and Hinata. Really? Then why are you losing? Hinata asked. You know what? I just about to had it with you and your so-called boyfriend. 18 said. With that, both 17 and 18 hold their palms out and power up their energy. Then, they fire the biggest beam they can at Naruto and Hinata. The beam's H. Static. Pepe Le Pew hugging a shunk looking cat. Melra. Hey, what's going on? Noticed something, Earth Beast, your dog is laying on the remote. Earth Beast. Oh, sorry. My dog always liked to be near me. Grab the remote from under his dog's head and push the button. Static. 
Then, they fire the biggest beam they can at Naruto and Hinata. The beams hit them, create large dust. That's takes care of those two, Seventeen said. But when the dust settle, they see Hinata spinning inside a golden orb. The orb disappear as Hinata stop spinning. You never expect my rotation barrier, did you? Hinata asked. That maybe, but your boyfriend wasn't so lucky. Seventeen said with a smile. Hinata with wide eyes, turn and see Naruto's lower body with upper body missing. Naruto, Hinata said, that's the end of that pesky boy. Eighteen said with an evil smile. Suddenly, Naruto's lower got back on its feet and suddenly, Naruto's upper body pop out fast. What, but how? Seventeen asked in shock, sorry, my secrets won't be told that easy. Naruto said, Piccolo will be shocked after saw that. If he wasn't shocked now at something or someone across from him. And who is Piccolo looking you asking? Well, clap, clap, clap. Good androids and bad androids turn to the sound and Naruto and Hinata is shocked of what it is. It's Cell, sitting on the rock with popcorn and drink like he's in the cinema. What a show, bravo, bravo. Now, it is time for me to reach my perfect form. Cell said, throwing popcorn box and drink cup away. Naruto and Hinata are starting to sweats at sight. Everyone look at Cell who's on the mountain. Oh no, how did Cell knows I was fighting the androids? Naruto thought. Oh great, if he merge with the androids, it's all over. Piccolo thought. Hey, what is that thing? Seventeen asked. Piccolo and Hinata turned to the androids in shock. He doesn't know, they don't know who Cell is. Hinata thought. Cell stare at his praise. I've been waiting for so long. It's almost as if I see them before. I recognize them somehow, Cell said. Cell stare at Android 17. Android 17. Cell started. Then Cell stare at 18. And Android 18. Cell finished. Cell then notice Android 16. Who's this one? He bears the red ribbon logo. He must be Dr. Jero's earlier model, Cell said. Believing that Android 16 is no threat to him. Cell went back to stare at the androids, getting ready to get on with his business. I had sniffed the bouquet and now, it is time to drink. Cell said. With that, Cell jump off and land few yards away from the Naruto, Hinata and androids. Naruto and Hinata went fighting stance. Suddenly, Cell yell as he power up. W what's happening? Hinata asked. A yellow aura appears around Cell. The aura then shows the imaginary souls of the human cell absorbed. T there must be thousands of them. Piccolo whispered in shock. He's energy level increase higher than before. Hanada said. Sixteen just stare at the monster. When he power up enough, cell with yellow aura wave around him, made his way to android 17 while pass shocked Naruto and Hanada when he stop and look back at Naruto and Hanada. What's wrong? You two are frightened. Don't be ashamed. It's hard. I know. You two feel my power and it hard to bear. Cell said with an evil smile before he continue heading to 17. What do you mean? It. Not your power. You stole it by taking lives of these innocent people. Naruto said in rage. What? Fools. They're part the greatest. Cell said. What? Hanada said. Meanwhile. What an horrible energy. Cell must have power up. Naruto. Hanada and Piccolo must be flipping out. I'm flipping out, oh dear, I think I overdid it on the coffee, you guys, Roshi said, holding a can of coffee, I didn't have any and I still about to out of my skin, man, this just isn't natural, it's driving me nuts, hanging around here while the fight is going on, Krillin said, yeah, you said it, this is nuts, there's must be something we can do, Tian said, I appreciate that you both want to help, but I think our best bet is to stay put till Bulma gets over here with the new remote control. Roshi said. As much as they hate to admit, but Roshi is right. There's nothing they can do without the remote. Can you guys fly faster than Bulma get here with her jet? What if you guys can save time by fly up to meet Bulma and bring the remote back? Chi Chi asked. Hey, you're right, Krillin said. Chi Chi sighed. Of course I'm right. You can solve problem without your fists you know. Chi Chi said. You should write that one down, Chi Chi. Now if you excuse me, I'm go and meet Bulma. Krillin said. With that, 
Krillin glow with aura wave around him, and take off. Good luck, Krillin, Roshi said. I can't take this anymore, Qian said. Roshi turned to Qian in shock. I'm not sure if I can help or not, but I'll never find out here, Qian said before he glow with aura wave around him. Qian, no, don't do it, Roshi said, but it's too late. Qian took off like a rocket. Drat, does anyone listen? Roshi asked as he crush his coffee can, their heads are too thick. Roshi then sighed, oh poopy, what am I talking about? My goodness, Roshi said as he sat down, if I was in his shoes, I would probably done the same thing. My gosh, it seems like yesterday when I was just like them. I was considered the strongest in the world back then. Now I'll do anything just to help out again. Chi Chi then stare up in the sky. Goku, please, we all need you, Chi Chi thought. Meanwhile, Goku stare at the door. Come on, what is going on, Goku thought. Meanwhile, Android 17 and 18 stare at Cell who was making his way to them. Hey, we were in the middle of something. You were intruding. 17 said. Yes, I see that now. How rude of me. There's must be somewhere I can make it up to you. Cell said with a secret plan to absorb Android 17 and 18. There's no need for that silly apologize. Just go away. We have some business that we try to settle. 17 said. Cell just made a evil smile as he rise his tail. Yes, yes, I see your point, but I have a little business of my own that I need to take care of. Cell said. 17. He came here to kill you and Android 18. Watch it, look out, Piccolo said. 17 after hearing that, saw Cell's tail heading to him. 17 dodge it, but Cell grab his arm and swing him to the ground. Cell then back kick Android 18 right to Android 16 and place his foot on Android 17's other arm and then point his tail at his target. But before he could absorb Android 17, Piccolo with Naruto and Hinata's help, kick Cell away, freeing Android 17. 17 got back up. Thanks, that was close. So, what's going on? You say this thing is here to kill me, 17 said. His name is Cell. He was created by Dr. Jero's computer and he came here to absorb you in 18. If he succeed and he's able to merge you two into his being, his evolution will be complete. Piccolo said. What a creep, 18 said, dusting herself. Rejoice, my brother and sister. The three of us are like pieces to a puzzle, designed and destined to fit together and become whole. Unite with me and fulfill Dr. Jero's dream to create Ultimate Warrior. Cell said. Hold out his hand to Android 17. It's a nice offer but no thanks. Besides, it seems a little crowded in there already. I don, T need you. This is who I am. 17 said, point at himself. It doesn't matter what you think you are. You a part of me and I'm going to absorb you. Cell said with a evil smile. Going ahead and give me your best shoot. Cell, 17 said, went on the fighting stance. Hold on, time out. Naruto call out, everyone turn to Naruto who glare at Piccolo. Kamikolo, were you follows while we battle? You just bring Cell right to the androids. Okay, I'm done. Naruto said. Well then, let's get on with it. 17 said. 17, I would not fight him. It's extremely risky. 16 suddenly yell out. Everyone turn to giant android. It will be best for both of you to run. This is a creature that has great power. Escape is highly recommend, 16 said. Now, you speaks, well, go ahead and take off if you want. Don't you worry, I'll take care of that big bad monster, 17 said. With that, 17 charged to Cell but before 17 throw a punch, Cell disappear and reappear over 17 then knock 17 to the ground. Naruto and Hinata charge together but Cell sense them coming and fire energy bullet at them, sending them to the cliff walls. Naruto and Hinata slide down. They are too injured and weak to do anything. Piccolo, after take off his hat and cape off, charge in as well. But Cell sense him and block the punch, grab the kicking leg and whack Piccolo few feet away. Decide to finish Piccolo first, Cell made his way to Piccolo. Piccolo got to his arms and legs only to turn to see Cell right next to him. You shouldn't have interfere, Piccolo. Cell said. Cell then kicked Piccolo few more feet away. Then Cell made his way to get rid of him. 
Boy, that one really smarts, Piccolo said as he slowly got up. 18 and 16 watches as Cell is getting closer to Cell. Come on, it doesn't seem like 17, Naruto, Hanada and Piccolo are even trying, 18 said. They are, the creature have much bigger power than them. You should leave here, while you can, 16 said. 18 turned to her big friend. If the creature absorbs 17, we will not be able to stop him. He will be too strong. You should go, 16 said. What would you do, stay or go? 18 asked. 16 just stare at the creature. Piccolo form a circle hands by his chest and starting to power up with all his energy. Cell just keeps on walking with carefree. This is for Gohan and Goku. Piccolo thought. Piccolo is have all of his energy to this attack. It might take out Cell. Hanada said. Somehow. I don't think so. Naruto said. Not worrying. Cell still heads to Piccolo. Now. Cell. Piccolo said. Yikes. 17 just said before he made a run for it. Piccolo forward his circle hands and unleash a powerful beam from Piccolo's hands at Cell who just walked to it. The beam hit it and create explosive, nearly destroying half of the island. Using so much energy, Piccolo is all tired out. Wow, I think Piccolo did it. 18 said. What a awesome attack that was. 17 said. Look like Kamikolo got rid of Cell. Naruto said. Quote dot dot dot. No, it's not over yet. Hanada said. Brilliant. What an attack. 18 said, not hearing Hanada who's too far away. Don't be fool. It's not over. He's not dead. 16 said. Piccolo in shock. Stare at the ocean. What's wrong, Piccolo? 17 asked. I. It's him. Cell. Piccolo said. Suddenly, glowing cell rise through the sea before he float to the island. Are you finished playing games, Piccolo? Cell asked. Tian watches from the cliff. Not good. Piccolo give everything he got and Cell didn't even feel a thing. What now? He can't win. Not with that much power. Tian said. You can't stop me, Piccolo. It's useless to resist. Cell said as he head to Piccolo. Cell now stand towering near Piccolo. I am used by you one man army, but I had run out of patience. The road of life ends here for you. You reach a dead end. Cell said. 17 slowly got back up and stare at Piccolo and Cell. Cell turned to see Android 17 then put a evil smile. R U N 17. Now, Piccolo call out. Suddenly, Cell punch Piccolo hard, knocking him to the ground. All too easy, Piccolo. Cell said, head to down Piccolo. Cell then pick Piccolo up who seemed to have a broken neck. Kamikolo, Naruto said as he and Hinata try to get up, but fall back down. Our energy is very low, we won't be able to help Piccolo. Hanada said. Piccolo, that thing, Tien said. Cell laugh, I could absorb you, but I have all that I need of your being inside my being already. You're no longer used to me. You just a waste of being. Cell said as he point his palm at Piccolo's side, goodbye. With that, Cell fire his energy wave, blasting Piccolo's side. Kamikolo, Naruto said. No. Hanada said. Meanwhile. Goku and Gohan sense Piccolo's lowing energy. Meanwhile. No. What a beast. 17 said. 18 stare at Cell in shock and horror. 16 stare at Cell, knowing Cell is a heartless monster. Cell smile before he throw Piccolo to the ocean. Piccolo's body slowly sinking in the sea. Meanwhile. Gohan is starting to cry. Piccolo. Guys. We've lost him. Goku said. Oh no. Piccolo, Gohan said, Mr. Popo slowly making tears. Kami, Mr. Popo said, I can't take this anymore. Gohan yelled. Gohan, Goku said, Gohan prepare to charge to the battle. But Goku appear behind his son and warp his arms around him, stopping him to leave. Let go, it's not fair, let go of me, Gohan said, trying to get free. Gohan, listen to me, I know it's not fair but we have only one chance to beat that monster and we have to play to win. Goku said. Sensing his son calm down a bit, Goku unwarp his arms then Gohan fell to his knees in sadness. If we don't Piccolo's sacrifice will be in vain. Goku said. But it's hurt, dad. Gohan said. I know son, I know. Goku said. Vegeta, 
trunks. Come on, we're out of time, we can't keep this up much longer. Goku thought. Meanwhile, Cell stare at the ocean. Alone at last, it seems that Piccolo will no longer be joining us. Cell said before he turned to Naruto and Hinata, and these look so trade to stop me. Cell then turned to his one of his targets. Android 17 went to a fighting stance. Don't be afraid Android 17. This is your destiny. It had always been. You were a part of me. Cell said before he turned to see Android 18. You too, my little peach. I'm going to gobble you up. Cell now look at his first target. Bad news. We will go through the show. Good news. We'll skip each battle till after Cell absorb Android 17. If you want to see these battles, just watch TV and see the battles in YouTube. Okay, that it. On with the stroy. Chapter 16. Stopping Cell. Cell look at the sea where Piccolo's sinking. For some reasons, destroying Piccolo was really amusing indeed. Now, Cell said as he turned to Android 17 and starting to make his way, so nice to you not to run away. Sorry to keep you waiting, brother. Cell then to to see Android 18 with an evil smile, I'll be with you in the moment. Naruto and Hinata try to get up but fall back down due of them not yet recover. Damn it, Naruto said, Cell then starting to charge at 17. Alright, let's play, 17 said, charging as well. Battle number 1 skip. Naruto and Hinata watch horrible as Cell beat 17 up without breaking a sweat. The more Naruto watch, the more he goes into rage and the more he goes into rage, the more he's glowing. Enough. It's time for me to absorb you. Come. Cell said as he pick up 17 from the back of his shirt. Android 17 in pain, turned to look at the monster. You're. Monster. I'll never be part of ugly creature like you. 17 said. Ah, your words hurt my poor little feeling. But that's okay, you will learn soon enough. Cell said with an evil smile as he rise his stinger over his first target. Seventeen watch as the stinger tip suddenly opened like a blooming flower, becoming a wide funnel with a dark, forbidding hole in its center. Welcome home, Cell said. Cell lower the funnel to Seventeen who managed to grab the sides. But because the battle with Naruto and beaten by Cell, he's losing his strength. Naruto gets into rage and suddenly, he's blowing with aura start changing and his eyes slowly changing into the eyes that never have seen since his battle of the androids, the future ones that is. The blue eyes of the imperfect form Cell. Cell laughing as he's so close of becoming perfect when suddenly, he sends his own energy signal from elsewhere. Cell turned to see Naruto but before he could blink or think, whichever come first, a big fist punch him on the face, forcing him to drop 17 and be sent few miles away. Naruto sudden stop as the aura and eyes change back to normal. Cell flip over and look at the one who punch him, Android 16. Cell then turn to Naruto for the while before he shake his head. My eyes must have play a trick on me. I'll think about it later. For now, I had to take care of this big android. Cell thought. With that, Cell went to fighting stance. Battle number 2 skip. 16 stand near a giant hole where Cell is. Naruto, Hanada, Tien, 17 and 18 was surprise and shock. 16, 18 said, 16 turned to 18, why are you still here? I told you to leave this place. 16 said, hey, you squash the bug, what's there to be afraid now? 18 asked. That attack wasn't enough to finish Cell, it's important that you get out of here immediately. You too, 17, don't let Cell have a chance to absorb you. 16 said. But 17 just smile. I don't think we need to worry about that. I think Cell is running away from us now. 17 said. But sadly, unknown to him, Cell is slowly rising from the hole behind 17 with glowing red eyes, eyes of evil that is, and funnel tail. Tian notices Cell. 17, watch out, he's behind you. Tian said. But too late. Cell's funnel tail quickly covered 17's head and shoulders, pinning his arms to his sides. The funnel closed around him. You should have listened to your friend. Cell said. 17 muttering as Cell's powerful tail muscles began to draw him into the tube like a snake ingesting its food. Naruto weakly stand up, destructo. But Naruto fall back down. Hanada dig her pocket and pull out two senzu beans. No, 
16 yelled as he charge as fast as he can. But too late, slowly, Android 17's body slid through Cell's tail. The bulge that contained the evil android entered through Cell's back, merging with him. 16 stop in shock. No, we're too late, Naruto said. Cell feels his power rising even higher. Suddenly, Cell glow bring as his body slowly transforming. After a big flash, Cell's wings disappear, and he becomes much more humanoid, also becoming more muscular. The nose is not yet fully formed, he now has an actual mouth. The two off-shooting sections of his head now go straight into the air, as well. In his new form, he is largest with his height being more than double that of Vegeta. His tail is longer and slightly thicker than before, and protrudes from his back, as well as becoming orange and black. The back of his head and the black section on his forehead are now formed together as a ball in between the two sections on his head. His lips are now the color pink, and the black sections above his lips look like a mustache, except it is part of his skin. He now has light blue eyes now. He even has boot-like feet in this form and metal-like plates all around both of his ankles. He has the same shape of ears as Frieza's, except that his have an orange line that goes down to the chin and to both sides of the ears. Yes, I waited a long time for this, Cell said with his new deeper voice. 18, we must go, 16 said, grab 18's arm and back a breaking speed to escape from Cell. Who went faster than 16 and blocked them? 16 move 18 behind him. Naruto and Hinata finish the beams and feel their powers rise. We may not save 17 but we can still stop Cell from absorbing 18. Naruto said. Hanada nodded. Cell then look at his reflection on the sea. Well, nice handsome look. Much better than the last. Absorbing 18 shall make the same effect. I can't wait. Cell said before he turn around, meeting 16's fist on his face. But to 16's shock, Cell is not feeling anything. Cell then without warning. Fire his energy blast on 16 right side of his head. 16 is still alive I mean online but in terrible damage. Now then, 18, it's your turn, Cell said as he makes his way to her. Suddenly, Cell sends Naruto and Tien above him. Cell look up and see them in Hinata that Cell can't sense her since Hinata is an android. What do you three think you're doing? Cell asked. Stopping you, Tien said, forming a vaguely diamond shape. Window with the hand by keeping the fingers on each hand together, overlapping the index finger on the one hand with the pinky of the other hand, and overlapping the thumbs. Fools, don't you know you're no match for me? Cell asked. Naruto point his palm at his, twin brother, while Hinata power up her hands, causing them to glow. Hinata's energy around her hands suddenly transform into into large guardian lion-shaped shrouds. Take this, try beam, Tien said. Big bang attack, Naruto said. Twin lion fists, Hanada said. Tien fire a big beam. Naruto fire a small energy ball which then grow bigger. Hanada throw one punch, sending a lion. The attacks hit Cell, pushing him through the ground, leaving a square shape hole. Hanada, Naruto asked. Hanada nodded. He's down there and he looks pretty mad. Hanada said. Tien then notices Android 18 still here. Why are you still here? Get out of here right now, Tien said. Cell is charging in the hole. Cell is coming, Hanada said. Together, they send their attacks again and again. Meanwhile, oh no, Goku said. Naruto and Tien are attacking Cell, are they? Gohan said. We had a plan, we just need more time, Goku said. Meanwhile, after the few attacks, Tynus getting weaker add weaker. Hanada is getting weaker too. Naruto is a bit weak but not even breaking a sweat. Boy, when I get out of here, I'm going to make you three pay. Cell's voice said from the hole. Cell try to get to the top but each time he does, Naruto, Hanada and Tyron push him back down. Hurry 18, we can't keep him much longer. Get out of here now, Hanada said. 18 nodded, help 16 up and together, they fly off. No, she mustn't escape, Cell said before manage to get to the top but Naruto send his bigger big bang, forcing him down again. They keep on attacking but Tien lost most of his energy and fall down, Hanada land near Tien on her knees. 
Naruto land next to them to check on them as Cell slowly rise from the hole, only to realize that 18 has got too far. No, she's escaped. All because of you three. I'll destroy you for this. Cell said. Naruto stand in front of Hanada and Tien. Tien is unconscious. There's no choice. In order to beat and destroy Cell, I have to use my perfect form. Naruto thought. With that, Naruto power up with with aura start changing but suddenly, Cell appear in front of Naruto before he punch Naruto on stomach really and very hard, knocking the wind out of him. Naruto fall down, unconscious. Naruto, Hanada said, and to finish you three off. Cell said, hold his palm at Naruto first. Meanwhile, Goku shake in anger then suddenly disappear. Meanwhile, Cell was about to fire when he sensed someone near Tien and Hanada. He turned and saw someone he could not bail. It's, it's Goku, Cell said. Cell, I presume, Goku asked. Cell stare at his enemy as he float high. Hanada, go get Naruto. Goku said. Hanada nodded as she weakly got up and head to Naruto as Goku glare at the monster. I really like to teach you a lesson. But I need one more day before I strong enough to go up against you. I'll make you pay, Cell. Your days of terrorizing the earth will be finished for good. Goku said. Cell laughing. Here I always wonders what will be like to face the legendary Goku. And all you have to say is, see you tomorrow. How disappointing. For all I heard, I never would have thought you as a coward. Cell said with a smile. Goku suddenly sensed something or someone nearby. I sense Piccolo. He's alive, Goku thought. Hold on, Piccolo. I'll be there in just a seconds. Goku said. What? Cell asked. Piccolo is alive, Hanada asked. Goku grab hold of Tien before turn to Hanada. Stay where you and your boyfriend are. I'll be right back in the flash. Goku said before he and Tien disappear. Cell was surprised. Clever trick. Cell started. Cell turned to the shore where Goku and Tien appeared. But they didn't get every far. Cell said. Goku then saw Piccolo laying on the shore. Piccolo's sides healed. Piccolo, are you okay? Goku asked as he pulled Piccolo out. Cell couldn't believe his eyes. What this? How can he still be living? I was too careless, Cell said. After placing Piccolo over his shoulder, Goku grabbed Tien's arm. Hold on, I get you some Senzu beans the moment we get to Kami's place. Goku said. Cell just smile. No Goku, we will fight right now, Cell said. With that, Cell charge at Goku. However, just as Cell near Goku, Goku with Piccolo and Tien, disappear and reappear near Naruto and Hinata. Grab hold, Goku said. With that, Hinata hold Goku's hand with her one hand and hold Naruto's arm with her other. Cell charge again, but just like before, Goku and others disappear. They're disappeared, Cell said in surprise. Cell stand in the center of the island and look around. Where did they go this time? Cell asked. Look like they not here this time, Cell. That's quite a move, I must found out how he does it. Well, that'll be the last time that they will get away from me. I'll deal with them soon, but finding Android 18 is much more important to me. Cell said. With that, Cell took off, looking the last piece he need for his complete form. Meanwhile, Goku and others just appear. Piccolo, are they alright? Gohan asked. Yes, son but they going to need some senzu beans. Goku said. Right, Gohan said, but we need to stop Cell for. Hanada couldn't finish as she slumped to the ground. Hanada, Gohan said, she'll be alright, she just needs some rests. Mr. Popo, could you help me with Naruto? Goku asked. Mr. Popo nodded as he pick up Naruto and Goku pick up Hanada and carry them to the bed where they can rest. Oh no, Cell got Android 17. Now he just need Android 18 to be complete and Naruto and Hinata is out of the games till how long? I don't know. Anyway, will Cell get 18? Is there anyone strong enough to stop Cell before he could absorb 18? Stay tuned for the answers to these questions and more on the next chapter of Perfect Ninja. Naruto and Hinata resting on the bed as Bulma check on them. A while later, Bulma leave them to rest and join the others with Mr. Popo carrying baby trunks. Goku, Gohan, Trunks and Vegeta putting on the Saiyan uniforms. How are they? Goku asked as he put his gloves on. 
They might be out for a day or so. Naruto even if he eat a senzu beam, use too much of his energy. Not to mention all the beating and a very hard punch on the stomach he got from Android 17 and Cell. As for Hanada, even if she doesn't losing energy, her robot side is far too damaged so when in safe zone, she automatically shut down so the robot part of her can repairing itself. Other than that, they'll be okay. Bulma said. That's good. Gohan said. I still don't trust them. Piccolo said. Enough of this. I'm going after Cell. Vegeta said before he glow golden and went off. Day later, Cell was laughing evilly as he glow and transform. Naruto and Hinata suddenly woke up. Naruto. Hinata started. I know. Cell has done it. He had reached his perfect form. Naruto said. They got off the bed and went outside, seeing everyone watching TV. Bulma turn and see them. You two are awake. Come quick. Cell is on TV. Bulma said. Hearing that, Naruto and Hinata rush to the TV, seeing a different Cell. Cell becomes much more humanoid in his perfect form, complete with both a fully formed nose and mouth. His tail is retracted. He is also smaller than in his previous form, being only about Piccolo's height. His wings have grown back and now are shaded black. His exoskeleton is colored light green with black spots and has black plates located on his shoulders and chest, and the plates on his ankles as well as the previously orange section near his groin are now shaded black. His skin is now pale all in his face, neck and hands, he now has purple lines in both sides of his cheeks, similar to Frieza in his first three forms, and the orange line across his ears and chin is now changed into a yellow color. His eyes are now pink, and his blue veins are now purple. No, just as were feared, he finally done it, Naruto said. Cell at the news floor, made an announcement about Cell game, the tournament he created, and that everyone have 10 days to prepare. Just then, a beat up Goku and Gohan join up. Hi everyone, Goku said. Goku, Gohan, everyone said. So, what's happening? Goku asked. Everyone explain Goku and Gohan what happened. So, here's the plan. I will go in first, then Vegeta and last Goku. Piccolo said. Actually, I think we should let Naruto and Hinata go in first. Goku said. What? Everyone but Gohan, Naruto and Hinata said. Are you insane? Piccolo asked. No, they'll need their training too. After them, Naruto and I spend half a day in it, followed by Gohan and Hinata with same amount. Then you can go in and then Vegeta last. Then anyone can go in for the last few days. Goku said. I don't trust them. Piccolo said. Well, I trust them. Goku said. Goku, I'm an android. How can you trust me? Hanada asked. You and Naruto saved Piccolo in my life. That's good enough for me. Plus, you did nothing but help everyone as you can. Goku said. Okay, let's go. Hanada said. Hold on. Naruto call out. Everyone look at Naruto, could we have some ramen first? I'm kinda hungry, Naruto said as he rub his tummy. Everyone but Hinata sweat drops. A while later, after about 48 bowls of ramen, Naruto and Hinata follow Mr. Popo. You'll have everything you need. There's food, bed and bath, Mr. Popo said. They have arrived near the door. Mr. Popo grabbed the handle, when you enter, you'll spend a year, but when you leave, only a day has passed. Naruto and Hinata nodded before they enter through. They're now in a look like a room with bathroom at one side and beds at the other. Naruto head outside, only to fall face first on the ground by powerful gravity. Naruto, are you alright? Hinata asked as she runs to her boyfriend, only to fall on her knees by that force as well. They got back up slowly and they're in a shock of vast emptiness. There's hardly any at all. Naruto said. I guess we better get started. What should work on first? Hanada asked. Well, I need to speed up my transforming forms. I only transform slowly, long enough for Cell to knock me out. While transforming, I'll train each forms. You can try your gentle fist style using key. Naruto said. Hanada nodded in agreement. Four hours later in time chamber. Naruto just stare at the emptiness, then suddenly he's glowing and he's starting to yell. A while later, he become what he haven't be since absorbed Android 17 from his time, imperfect form cell. It's still too slow, I need to speed it up. 
Naruto said. For now, Naruto starting to throw punches and kicks. Meanwhile, Hanada is sparing with another Naruto. Oh wait, that's a clone of Naruto. Silly me. Anyway, Hanada's eyes glow slivery lavender. Through her eyes, Hanada can see some pinpoints inside Naruto's body. The green circle moves around each pinpoints and then land on the on near the right shoulder with the work, target lock. Appear over the circle. Hanada then charge at Naruto's clone and land two fingers on that target, disable Naruto's arm. This new eyesight is nearly the same as my Byakugan. It could help my gentle fist style, Hanada thought. Hanada then tap her two fingers on that mark to fix Naruto's arm which seems to be working. Meanwhile, Naruto in his imperfect form cell, focus his energy on his palm and a glowing ball shine bright before he supercharge at the now appearing block of ice. Rasengan, Naruto said, then ram the Rasengan on the ice, shattering it to bits. Suddenly, two huge trees appear behind him. Naruto focus his energy again only this time, creating four large points around the central Rasengan core, giving the appearance of a Fuma Shurik. Rasenshuriken, Naruto yelled. With that, he throw the Rasenshuriken at the trees. One tree has cut off while the other one got blow up. Wow, my old tricks goes well in my cell forms. Cell is about to meet his match. Naruto said. Few hours, no days, no weeks oh. This time chamber is really confusing. Anyway, few of those later. Naruto still in his imperfect form cell, and Hinata are both panting. Let's take a break, Naruto said. With that, Naruto starts to glow and transform back to human Naruto. Naked human Naruto. Oh man, not again, Naruto yelled as he cover himself. As for Hinata, she stare at her husband I mean, boyfriend so long as her face is glowing red. System overloading, system overheating, system overloading, system overheating a computer voice inside her android head. Before she did something she never have done since her past married to Naruto. She faint. Oh man, I thought we got over this. Naruto said. After that, Naruto carry his wife I mean, girlfriend back to the building and lay her on the bed. Naruto then head to the big bag and pull out spare clothes. Good thing I brought some spares for just emergency. Naruto muttered as he put them on. A while later, Hanada with a blush, watch naked Naruto with the stopwatch as Naruto is glowing and transform into imperfect form cell. Naruto look at his girlfriend who sadly shake her head. By the way, the only reason that he took of his clothes is to make sure he doesn't lose them while transforming. Still too slow, Hanada said. Damn it, I still need to work on it. Naruto said. I'm sure you can. You made the impossible possible before. Hanada said. That was the old me. I'm not the same anymore. Naruto said. Suddenly, slap. Naruto just stare at his girlfriend while rubbing his sore cheek with red hand mark. Don't say that. You're still Naruto Uzumaki I know, loved and married. You may be sell but deep inside, you're Naruto. Hanada said. Naruto stare at Hinata for the while before he put up with a smile, you're right Hinata. What will I ever do without you? You could still be an idiot. Hinata said with a smile. Both of these couple laugh at it. While later, human Naruto yelled and glow as he transforming into imperfect form cell. He turned to his human clone who has the stopwatch. That was fast, his clone said. Finally, Naruto said. During three mouths or whatever in this time chamber, Naruto managed to speed up his transformations. Outside the time chamber, day later, Goku and Gohan are punching and kicking. Just then, the time door as I call it open and the beat out Naruto and Hinata walk out. Hi guys, Goku said, how's the training? Gohan said, hard, just the way I like it. Naruto said, great, okay, Gohan. You and Hinata go in and spend half a day inside, training. Goku said. Gohan nodded as Hinata give Naruto a quick on the lips before both she and Gohan walk inside then the door shut. Hinata and Gohan enter the time chamber to spend half a day training. Well, let's get started. Hinata said. With that, a while later or so, Hinata and Gohan are throwing fists and kicks in air. Gohan also watches the kindness woman he ever meet is being strong punching and kicking so fast. A moments later or so, Gohan and Hinata are having sparing match with each other. 
It took a while, but Hinata knocked down Gohan easy by punch him on the stomach. Dead, Hinata said. After a while, they went to sleep. Well, Hinata is while Gohan is outside training. He yell and power up as his golden aura wave around him. Sensing his energy level, Hinata woke up and went to see. She was surprised to see how powerful Gohan is. A while later, Gohan sit on the steps to rest when Hinata sit next to him. I saw you training and scanned your energy level and I must say, you be able to beat Cell or anyone. Hinata said. Gohan smile for the smile fall as he low his head. What's wrong? Hinata asked. It just, I don't know if I can do this. Gohan asked. You're shy, less confidence and very kind. Hinata said with a small smile. How do you know? Gohan asked. I knows this girl who has the same problem as you have. Hinata said meaning herself. Hinata the tell Gohan a story about a little princess who's very shy, very, very kind and not enough confidence. Then one day, the princess meet a street boy who have more confidence but not bright enough. Watching him while hiding every day, the princess learned confidence and slowly grown strong. Years later, they got to know each other. But some bad guy attacked the street boy and the princess gained enough confidence to fight to defend it her unknown lover. Before she battle, she told the street boy, I love you. After the evil defeated, they going out, get married and have kids. That a sad but cool story. Gohan said, yeah, the main point is, that while you can still be kind, you sometimes need to be strong to protect those you care about. Hanada said. Like dad, Gohan said. That's right, your father grown strong because he needs to be strong enough to protect you and your mother. Hanada said. Hanada then got back up. Now, we'll work on your confidence. Hanada hold out her hand which Gohan take it. Many moment later, or something, Hanada and Gohan went sparing till Gohan grab and twist Hanada's arm. Hanada knee down while hold on her twisted arm. Hanada, I'm sorry, Gohan said as he heading to help her. Only to be grab in tight hug by Hanada. First rule, never let your kindness clouded your judgment. Hanada said. Gohan tried to get free but the hold is very strong. Suddenly, Gohan yell as the golden aura wave around him. Then he ram his forehead on Hanada's causing her to let go. They both fall down. Hanada look at Gohan before she smile, nice way to get out. Gohan smile back, outside of the chamber after 12 hours. The door open and both beaten and worn out Gohan and Hanada arrive near others. Naruto head to Hanada and give her a grade before he and Goku enter the time chamber themselves. Well, let's get started. Goku said, with that, Naruto and Goku had a sparing on each other. A while later, Goku went to get a really long eat while Naruto after checking to see he's alone, took off his clothes and starting to power up and transform into first form cell in few seconds faster than before. I'm getting better, Naruto in his first cell's voice, said. Then Naruto come up with a plan for his training. I may not be the Naruto I used to be along before I died, but I still have my old techniques so I can work on them with my cell forms along with Super Saiyan power. Cell said. With that, he went to work on them. Meanwhile, Goku had been eating about 46 bowls and 54 plates. Last one later, Goku was about to go out to join Naruto when he sensed Cell's energy. Slowly and carefully, Goku walk out and see that look like Cell in different form. Remember, Goku never meet first form Cell but has the same Kai. Then Goku can see Naruto's clothes on the floor. Meaning. You monster. Goku yelled as he attack Cell. But Cell already sense him coming and jump to dodge and land on the wall like Spider-Man. Wait, I'm not Cell, Naruto tried to say. Goku didn't listen as he launch energy balls and Naruto dodge them all till he land behind the pillar near his clothes. Goku then saw glow behind the pillar and saw a human arm reach out and grab the clothes. A few minutes later, Naruto in his human form arrive from the pillar, looking mad at Goku. Na Naruto, but, but how? Goku asked, Naruto sigh before he told Goku at the start of his birth to now. Wait, you're a different cell from different future. You already got androids. You come here to stop Dr. Grio from waking androids 17 and 18. Goku asked, yeah, something like that. Naruto said, why didn't you tell me or others? Goku asked, 
I have my reasons. I'll tell you when the time is right, Naruto said. Goku thought about it for the moment, before he was thinking about food. Anyway, all right then, now, let's get back to training, Goku said with a smile. Naruto smiled back and nodded, outside of the chamber after 12 hours. The door opened and both beaten and worn out Goku and Naruto arrived near others. Okay, Kamikolo, your turn, Naruto said, I told you to stop calling me that, Piccolo said while everyone laughed. Cell game day, everyone meet up at Kami's place. Good luck, you guys. Dend, the new guardian, said. With that, Z fighters fly off to face the monster Cell. Cell is standing on the center of his ring when a limo arrive. Coming out of that limo, is a tall man of a rather muscular and hirsute physique. His black curly afro, mustache, and well-trimmed sideburns are among his most recognizable traits, as well as his cleft chin. The man typically is seen in his martial arts uniform or in fitted suits, but has been known to wear more luxurious clothing when resting or making public appearances. His GI is often accented with white cape depending on which GI he dons, and his notably hairy chest and arms are usually displayed openly. Cell, my name is Hercule Satan and you are going down. Mr. Satan said. Nearby is Jimmy Firecracker and his crew. And there you have it everyone. Mr. Satan is about to show Evil Cell why he's the champion. Jimmy said. I know all you tricks. Mr. Satan said with a mocking smile. Cell says nothing as he sends someone coming. Just then, Vegeta arrived, glaring at Cell. Mr. Satan along with the report crew was shocked. How did he fly here? Jimmy asked. It, it's a trick, Mr. Satan said. Just then, Android 16 arrived from the air as well. Then Z fighters arrive as well. Well, since everyone is here, let the games begin. So, how will go first? Cell asked. Mr. Satan step follow, you're looking at him. But before he could remove his cape, a copter arrive. Jumping from the copter, are two men and one lady. Man number one is thin and long blonde hair named Karoni. Man number two is a huge chubby named Parashki. And the lady is their manager named Miss Pisa. Please, allow us to handle him. Karoni said, that guy is weak compare with you. Parashki said. Mr. Satan went in deep thought, you have a point. It will be a shame for me to fight a weak fool like Cell. Be my guest. Hanada watches all this from other side before she made her way with Naruto follow his girlfriend. You know, they won't listen. Naruto said, I have to try, Hanada said. As Karoni about to step on the ring, Hanada got in the way, please don't go. You have no chance against Cell. He's way out of your league. Mr. Satan walked to Hanada and hardly patting her on her head, silly little girl. Why don't you go home and play your dolls and leaves this big bad monster to the big boys? Naruto is not happy for what Mr. Satan just said to his girlfriend wife so, he appear in front of Mr. Satan and finger flicks Hercule into a nearby or hopefully, far away mountain. Reports crew and tag partners was shocked at this. Karoni and Parashki then glare at Naruto as Karoni says, let's teach that weakling a lesson. Hanada suddenly, appear in front of those two and twin gut shots them, knocking them out. The report crew are very surprised and shock. I'm not sure what happened everyone, but it would seems that the champion and his former students has just knocked over by two teenagers. Jimmy said as the cameraman point the camera at Naruto and Hanada. Meanwhile, the rich man from Ginger Town, was in apartment, watching TV when he see. It the hero pair who's saved my life. Go get him, heroes. Rich man said. Meanwhile, Mr. Satan somehow, managed to return. That boy has somehow knockout drugs on me. And the same for his girlfriend. Everyone can s, Mr. Satan sudden lost the sounds. Mr. Satan patting his neck before got his face red in anger and starting to waves his arms while try to cursing. Earth beast. Goodness me. I seem to, accidentally, turn on the mute. Melra. Can you go ahead and, accidentally, leave it on. Anyway, back to the story. Those two shows quite promises. Now, who's first? Will it be you, Goku? Cell asked, really wants to battle Goku. Goku step on the ring, let's do this. Just to let you know, the battle between Cell and Goku is the same as the canon so, we'll skip it to the moment you readers have been waiting for. 
Beaten Goku land near his son. Son, I know you can do this. Gohan stare at Cell, but before he could do anything. Gohan, hang on. Everyone turn to Naruto. Let me battle Cell, Naruto said. Everyone was shocked. Are you sure? I think that Gohan. I'm sure Goku. I know I can handle him. Goku stare at his friend before he smile big, okay. Good luck. Hanada then Naruto on the cheek, be careful. Don't worry, it be over soon, Naruto said with a smile before he float down to battle cell. So, you'll my next opponent. You won't last a minute against me, Cell said. We'll see about that, Naruto said. Then suddenly, a punch land hard on Cell's face, sending him flying but he stop in midair and stare at Naruto. So, you're faster than before. Not bad, Cell said. Wow, I don't know how, but this kid managed to punch evil Cell so fast like he just took one big step. Jimmy said. It, it's a trick. That's it, a trick. Mr. Satan said. Oh, Mr. Satan, you're so clever. Miss Pisa said. Please. Back with Naruto, he went to his fighting stand. Sorry, but this will finish you off so I can get back to fighting Goku. Cell then cupping his hands at his side, came, came, a brilliant light started to build up in his hands. No, Cell is using the Kamehameha wave, Piccolo said. Cell then released it in one burst with a cry of, ha. The large blue energy wave speed towards Naruto. Naruto jump high to dodge but notices the energy is heading to the fighter wannabe fools and report crew. No, Naruto said, Naruto rocket towards those people while glowing with golden aura wave around him, making him like a comet. The Z fighters suddenly sense something. Has, has Cell double his energy level? Krillin asked. Cell also sense himself. Just like before, Cell whispered. The energy and glowing Naruto, arrive at fighters and crew then there is a big explosion. Z fighters and Cell turn to follow the new energy signal. And boy, are they in for surprise. Everyone who is watching TV, are shock and surprise as well. Cuz, standing on the top of a cliff, is imperfect form cell with blue eyes. Under his arms are fighters and report crew with Miss Pisa being wrapped by the tail. Blue eyed cell drop them before hover back to the battlefield. You just ruined my clothes, cell. Imperfect Naruto said with his imperfect cell's raspy voice, as he pulled the remaining clothes off. How, how can there be two of me? Prefect cell asked. Meanwhile, I see it but don't believe it. There seems to be two cells. But one of them saved our lives from that explosion. Jimmy said. It's a trick. That cell is trying to trick us so he can finish us off himself. Mr. Satan said while feel ashamed that he was saved. You're right as always, Miss Pisa said. Back with imperfect Naruto and cell. Suddenly, imperfect Naruto yell as he power up. A yellow aura appears around imperfect Naruto. The aura then shows the imaginary souls of the dinosaur-like animals Imperfect Naruto absorbed. When he power up enough, Imperfect Naruto then went in fighting stand. Those aren't people, why? Prefect Cell asked, cause unlike you, I never attack innocent people. I instead, use dinosaurs. Imperfect Naruto said with a smile. Perfect Cell was enraged that he fired his giant energy ball at Imperfect Naruto. Then there a by kaboom. Imperfect Naruto flying backward, but stop in midair. Perfect Cell appear behind Imperfect Naruto then kick him, sending him high in the air when Imperfect Naruto stop in the air. Then Imperfect Naruto form the circle hand sign near his chest and start chant. Came, Haim, Ha, Imperfect Naruto chanted. Suddenly, a brilliant blue light started to build up in his hands with yellow light mixed with it. Perfect Cell is surprise. Beam Cannon. Imperfect Naruto finished. Imperfect Naruto forward his circle hands and unleash two beams from Imperfect Naruto's hands. Large blue one remains straight while the yellow one coils around the straight beam. The beams are heading to Perfect Cell who cross his arms in front to block it. He's hurts a bit but sadly for us, Perfect Cell still lives. I never see a move like that before. Perfect Cell said. Suddenly, Perfect Cell has sense Imperfect Naruto from behind. He turned to see charging Imperfect Naruto. Perfect Cell jump high with Imperfect Naruto follow and then they were punching, kicking, dodging and blocking. 
They add it for the while till Perfect Cell whack him Perfect Naruto on the head, sending him to the ground hard. Perfect Cell land few feet away. I must say, I'm surprised you sudden show up while I was finished that blonde hair boy. Perfect Cell said with a smile even though, the imperfect Cell is not acting like he's supposed to be. Imperfect Naruto got up and laugh, sorry to disappoint you, but you haven't got rid of me that easy. Perfect Cell and Z Fighters was shocked and surprised when Imperfect Cell just said. Then suddenly, it's starting to made sense. You, you're that boy, Perfect Cell said. Very good, brother, slow but good, Imperfect Naruto said. The Z Fighters turned to Hinata as Piccolo says, you knew about this. Naruto will tell us soon enough, Hinata just said. Perfect Cell snarled, who reprogrammed you? Imperfect Naruto was a bit surprised before he smiled, no one did. I made that choice on my own free will. What? Perfect Cell asked. Yes, we are so alike, but I got something you never heard of. Imperfect Naruto said as he smiled. With that, Imperfect Naruto focused his energy on his palm and a glowing ball shine bright before creating four large points around the central Rasengan core, giving the appearance of a Fuma Shirik. Perfect Cell was very surprised, I never seen this before. Resenshuriken, Imperfect Naruto yelled, with that, he throw the Resenshuriken at Perfect Cell then a huge explosion. But Perfect Cell managed to dodge it. Perfect Cell look around before Imperfect Naruto appear behind him and capture him in tight lock. Got you, now, let's see how you like it, Imperfect Naruto said. With that, Imperfect Naruto aim his tail stinger at his, twin brother. Perfect Cell's eyes widen in fear at the stinger as he try to get free. The stinger launch but Perfect Cell managed to move, only having his arm hit hard. Only got your arm, no matter, I'll absorb you slow and painful, Imperfect Naruto said. With that, Imperfect Naruto is absorbing from Perfect Cell's arm while Perfect Cell is screaming of pain. Meanwhile, it would seems the second cell is draining first cell alive with his tail. Jimmy said. It's a trick. Isn't it Mr. Satan? Miss Pisa asked. Why yeah, a trick, Mr. Satan said. Meanwhile, all right, if Naruto completely absorbs Cell, it will be all over. Yamcha said with everyone cheering on. Meanwhile, Imperfect Naruto is draining the life from Perfect Cell's arm and rendering the limb useless and withered. We should say Naruto compete absorb evil and be done with it. But this is mighty, great and powerful Perfect Cell we're talking about. So. If I going down, I'll take someone with me, Perfect Cell said. With that, Perfect Cell launch a energy ball from his other hand, at Gohan who was too surprised to move. Imperfect Naruto seeing his little friend in danger, unstab his stinger and went fast. Imperfect Naruto managed to get in front of Gohan and knock the ball away. Then Imperfect Naruto turned to Gohan, you're okay. Gohan nodded, not trusting his voice. Good. Imperfect Naruto said before returning to the battlefield with Perfect Cell with his useless arm. I'm not pleased if you nearly kill Gohan. But unlike you, I have honor so I'll wait till you grow a new arm. Imperfect Naruto said before he turned to the Z fighters, it'll take a while so any questions. I have one, who are you really? Piccolo asked, as I thought. Kamikolo asked first, it's a long story so I just sit down. Imperfect Naruto then stub his stinger to the ground and then cross his legs and arms while using his tail as the stander, my full name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. I was a ninja. A ninja? Gohan asked. I was from the other world full of ninjas. Imperfect Naruto said. Other world? Trunks asked. You see, I was born to bring peace and destroy the chains of hate. Unfortunately for me however, on the day of my birth, the creature known as the nine-tailed fox named Kurama attacked my village and my father, the fourth Hokage sealed him inside me so I can use his powers. As I grow older, I manage to bring peace. Imperfect Naruto said. Then why are you cell? Piccolo asked. Well, on the day of my death, I was ready to join my parents in heaven. But the reaper, the death god came to me in the limbo and offer me a new life. And when I opened my eyes, I was reborn as Cell only I ignored Doctor's computer about attack those people. Imperfect Cell said. Then why are you here? Goku asked. Even thought the androids are defected, I still feel bad of not be ready on time to stop them. 
So a friend of mine has handed me the time capsule. Imperfect Naruto said. Time capsule, you mean? Trunks asked. That's right, Trunks. I'm talking about your mother. Unfortunately the time where I come from, you were killed by the androids. Anyway, Bulma set up the pragarm. But like Cell, I'm too big to fit into that machine. So instead revert into a larval from, I transform back to my old body you see before. With that taken care off, I activated the machine back about few months before Dr. Jero and Android 19 arrive. Imperfect Naruto then turned to Perfect Cell, grow new arm yet. Perfect Cell glare at his lead say, counterpart. No? Oh, tut 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 tut. So slow. Alright, any more questions? Imperfect Naruto asked. I got pair. How did your time capsule destroyed and how did you truly come with Miss Android 21? Trunks asked. Ha, huh, I guess you must have found the destroy parts. I destroyed my machine so it won't fall to wrong hands. As for Hanada, when I arrived here I feel empty inside. That feeling is what I felt when I not around my wife. Imperfect Naruto said. Ah, Z Fighters asked. Me, my real name is Hanada Hayuga Namikaze. I'm too a ninja with a special eyesight known as Byakugan. I married Naruto a long time ago. Hanada said. And then I remember about the Dragon Balls so I decided to collect them and wish for Hanada to join me with a prepare body. Unfortunately, the only thing that stupid dragon ever did is combined her soul with copy soul of the android. Fortunately Hanada is still Hanada I remember. Imperfect Naruto then turned to Perfect Cell, now, are you ready yet? Perfect Cell answer by rip off his useless arm and then quickie grow new arm. About time, I was getting bored. Imperfect Naruto said with a smile. With that, Imperfect Naruto went to the fighting stand. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.